Milk. Crate. Marauder. I need to get set up for my show. Bottle of water. George, you want to do an announce? Be happy. Good morning, everyone. This is the holiday season. I would like to remind everyone to be jolly, merry, and happy. Three words that sum up the joy of the holiday season. Now, here are three words that sum up how I feel this holiday season. Fuck Hank Azarius. <laughs> Happy holidays and the Howard Stern Show. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, getting that off your chest. And I think he deserves it, though. So. What's your schedule? Have you been going to theater and stuff all week? I have, indeed. Uh, yesterday at the, uh, for the matinee, I saw... Um, Edward Elby's addition to his classic zoo story. You know, zoo story was written... Uh, Zeus or zoo? Zoo, zoo story. Zoo, zoo story. It's a two-character zoo. play about uh, a young, angry, psychotic kid. And I played that role many, many decades ago. And Artie's still playing that role. <laughs> <laughs> Artie's not stuck so, in that role. Not so young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not so young anymore. And uh, a, a, a very uh, staid businessman when you go to these shows yeah is it hard for you as an actor to sit there mm. and not be the one on stage oh yeah it's it's but you know obviously i knew the words for the role of jerry but i know that i shouldn't be playing it anymore you know, you, but i mean you, is it hard for you to go to the theater and say you know why am i not doing that show there are many uh, roles where i feel like leaping upon that stage and uh, taking over you know but you do Yes, but when it's a brilliant performance, and this guy was Dallas Roberts, we're going to be be hearing a lot from him. <laughs> Fantastic, powerful actor. What do you like? Do you ever about? go? I don't know. Who knows? I'm just thinking he must be cute. <laughs> no, actually, he was kind of. Uh, you know, he was dirty, filthy. He was. Uh, you like that? That's perfect. That's your type. Bearded, yeah. messy haired. You don't like hungry. beard. You don't like a beard. On a man? Uh, it depends on the man. And uh, yeah, he, you know, once I clean him up, I'm sure he see? could be... Uh, <laughs> Did he have a nice body? <laughs> you couldn't tell because he had coats uh -huh. and, you know, all sorts of layers of clothes. But he was like a Roberts. diamond in the rough. Yeah. George, do you feel you're recognized as a great actor? I mean, have you gotten your shot in life to really show off your talents? I mean, Heroes, to me, is the closest thing that I've seen where you really get to show off some acting and you don't have to play, uh, you know... Second so, fiddle. Second fiddle. You get you get to be a scene stealer. Uh, do you think that you have been gypped in life of those roles? No, because uh, in the theater I've had those opportunities. I think the best role I had was a play that I did here in New York uh, in the seventies called Year of the Dragon, about a young Chinese American, and that was. And then we filmed it for TV uh, in the theaters in America. Uh, so you feel you've gotten your shot. I did uh, Equus last year uh, in Los Angeles, where I, I got to play the uh, Richard Burton, uh, Anthony Hopkins, uh, Anthony uh, Perkins, and Leonard Nimoy role. How old were you when you knew you needed to be on stage? I knew when I was about uh, eight or nine, I, I enjoyed performing. Uh, but did, my when parents, growing up a uh, Japanese American, did you say to yourself, and everyone else must have said to you, George? Yeah, you're never going right. to get a shot on, on in theater or on stage. There's so few roles for people like us. Right. My father knew that. And he told you, don't do this. He urged me to go into architecture. And I did start off uh, my college years as, as an architecture student. So, but, so when do you get the Star Trek break, so to speak, where it shows that you could actually have a career doing this? Well, um, how many years after architecture school? No, it wasn't after. I didn't finish because uh, after my second year as an architecture student, I was back in Los Angeles for the summer, and uh, I didn't have a summer job. And my father happened to be looking through the papers, and he saw uh, an ad for uh, a dubbing job. And he said, George, you're not uh, working. Why don't you go and audition for this? You're a ham. <laughs> and so uh, I went and auditioned. I got it. And uh, my first paying gig was, would you believe, in 1957, exactly 50 years from uh, this year. So wow. I've been getting paid. So your father who discouraged you was the one who found your first job. My first job. And How I, ironic. I went back to uh, Berkeley as an architecture student, but that's when, you know, the seed was planted. And so uh, I came back and I said, Dad, I have to go to New York and study at the Actors Studio. He talked me out of that one. He, he was a businessman, and he knew how to make a deal. He said, all right, George, you want to go to New York 
and uh, study at the Actors Studio. That's a respected acting school, but uh, it's a New York is a staggeringly expensive place, a crowded place, a competitive place, and you got to be uh, be willing to do that all on your own. But he said, no help from your father. No help from my father. How did you support yourself? Well, no, but he said, here's the other side of that deal. Your mother and I would like you to have a college degree, something that says you're a legitimately educated person. The actor studio, you know, as distinguished as it is, won't give you that. UCLA has a fine acting school. And if you go there, they will give you that documentation that you're an educated person. And if you go to UCLA, you'll have subsidy. You go to New York on your own or UCLA in the theater arts department with subsidy. You decide. Well, in two seconds, you'd grab UCLA. I was a practical kid. That's right. Wait, you found Didn't it? you uh, do voiceover work for the old Godzilla movies? I did. Good for you. My first one was Rodan, and the, oh, I did a Godzilla movie, and then I did another one called... You did Rodan? Rodan. You did the voiceover. The so voiceover. So you dubbed right. in, in other words... English dialogue. Right, because most of those Japanese films were in Japanese, and you were brought in to do the... English. Look, there's Rodan. Mm. Uh-oh. We and, must have to the How many characters would you play? Uh, well, I played the voice of uh, the panic hordes of Tokyo. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> as well as about... That was you. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. I can't tell you how many Saturday afternoons I listened to you. I definitely enjoyed your work. Well, did you? Yeah. So you were listening to me way back then. Definitely. I, I remember. George, why are you leaving New York at the end of the week? What is, what is on your schedule? Are you going back to shoot more episodes of Heroes? No. What's going on? I'm uh, working on uh, an independent film called Red Canvas. Uh, a, a mixed martial arts fighting thing. And, uh, you know, the issue is uh, the use of drugs. And I'm playing the CEO, a rather shady, corrupt CEO of a drug corporation. I can see you doing that. <laughs> in, in light of your role on Heroes, you play a very good CD kind of mogul. Maybe that's another new stereotype for me now good well <laughs> hey you can't do 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 badly with that kind of stuff oh, i'm having a lot of fun all right all right i just want to know what you're up to i must say well, once again the emails well what can i tell you all positive for george everybody loves when you're here george they say you make an excellent addition to this show so i thank you for that well you know i've been getting some emails too about, uh, particularly about uh, the quote Artie's coming out. Oh, boy. Yes. And I've been thinking on that. Yeah. You were brilliant. <laughs> but, yeah. but, no I one is so brilliant. I mean, really great performances always have. You feel he might have had a gay experience. I, I, I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover for Artie by going along with the joke. You know, that was a joke. Artie was really coming out. Wow. I really. No, no, he's straight. He's he straight. Is straight. But, but there are a lot of straight men who have that one experience, ah. and it torches them. You know, I was consumed with this bit yesterday. In fact, Beth uh, rarely listens to the show. She says, I tuned in your show yesterday. I heard Artie coming out to George. She goes, oh, my God, that was so mean, but I laughed so hard. <laughs> so I, I was like, yeah, it was really funny. And then, you know, my mind starts taking over, and I go, oh, I wish you could do it again, and then have Artie go. And George, look, I don't even talk like this. This has all been an act. This is my, this is my real voice. Yeah, I'm really oh, effeminate. I'm so effeminate. Oh, no, no. And, and I just want you to know that in front of you to talk in my real voice is <laughs> so comforting. And when so, I'm at home, I just... Now, that's going to take acting on his part. Artie, that would be I good. love Artie for what he is. Oh, Artie, do you think that would have been funny? Guy. Like if you were mincing, like, you know... Can you transform yourself into a woman? Or... I didn't think of that, but I thought it would have been funny if at some point I had just started... Crying uncontrollably. Right, right, right. Like, some, yeah, like, like, I just, was thinking, and just put like, my head on his shoulder and just cried for like fifteen minutes. Well, like I really boohooing. Really, well, yeah. You and know, see how long easy. you would have just let me lay there. It's easy in retrospect to sit there and come up with Second ideas. Second guess it. Second but you did it. a great job. Yeah, you did a great job. But all of a sudden, I'm going. I'm, I'm standing in the shower. And I'm thinking about the bed, and I went. You know, all of a sudden, I could see Artie going. Look, George. <laughs> now I'm doing my real voice for you. <laughs> Even if George didn't, you know, it would have been funny. He goes, I feel good now. Because I can talk like this. And also, do you ever think a man as great as you could ever love me? <laughs> and, 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 and then George would be like, well, of course, Artie. Someone will love you. No, but I mean See, you. See, he could take it even further and he could say, you know, under these, you know, this, you know, 
pair of corduroys and and the the you know flannel shirt i'm wearing a frilly bra <laughs> <laughs> i was like a cross dress if he had done that i would have burst out laughing. i don't think you would have would have I, no, I believe don't think you would have i believe you would have gone with it i, I do. don't think so <laughs> i don't think, think so. you were in the zone you were in no, the helping he was there was <laughs> three in that before i uh, uh, i uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe I would just start redecorating Sean Richards. <laughs> you know what? It drives me crazy how he doesn't dress well. No. <laughs> I have the perfect casting uh, as a replacement for that uh, lead in uh, Hairspray. You know, the oh, Marty Lang, yes. Uh, the Harvey Kirstein role. You would be brilliant in it. Uh, I don't you, think so. You are, you, we don't need a fat suit for you. Right. Oh. And you're a well, wonderful actor. <laughs> Marty, no fat suit. You saved them a lot of money. I got to say, I saw that some of that on a plane and it's the, that John Travolta th that's the creepiest thing I've ever seen <laughs> him dressed up like a woman woo yeah woo and the performance is like he really becomes a broad he's like oh you know he's it's his dream part. Let me read you. Let me read you. Let me read you some reaction to the whole Artie coming out thing. As long as you're uh, first of all, uh, here's a guy who says Artie should just stop bitching about the show or quit the show. After hearing Artie on the show, and more so on the wrap up show, he really should just quit. He's showing less respect to the show than Jackie when he held out every year. Artie obviously does not want to be there. He's lazy. He hates his job where you work four days a week and have about twenty ridiculous weeks of vacation. Nobody wants to hear a guy in the show who hates it. I don't care how big of an Artie fan they are. Fire him and tell him to quit already and stop bringing the show down. Well, which is it? Should we fire him or have him quit? <laughs> <laughs> Just fire me, then tell me to quit. <laughs> uh, but here's a reaction to gay Artie and George Takei. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, here's a guy who didn't like it. Artie gay prank. I don't often shut the show off, but this is shitty. You use George for cheap frills, disappointing and heartless, fucked up radio. The show is usually wonderful, fantastic. This was mean-spirited and callous, George. <laughs> I'm going along with it. All right. Uh, when Artie's fat ass nods off around 10 a.m., George should fuck his ass and make him humble. <laughs> what, what about that? If Artie falls asleep during the show, would you just stick your penis in his ass? <laughs> you know, it's not a sexual love that I have for him. Right. It well, we're is. not saying it should be sex. What? Uh, you know, for pleasure. For pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the coming out of the closet, that coming out of the closet bit is the funniest thing I've ever heard. You see, that's how you make gay fun. That is why Artie is a comedian and Richard and Sal are hacks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a um, brilliant actor, too. Uh, Artie coming out to George is one of the most awful betrayals of trust you have ever perpetrated on the show in more than 20 years that I've been listening to it. How could you have done that to George? He is one of the kindest souls ever <laughs> to have been part of the show. What if Artie's only brilliant at pretending to be gay? I know, no, well, but, there's, but there's money in that. That's where the brilliance is. He's been able to cover the truth for all these years. Oh, you're talking about it that way. Yes. He's acting now. Oh, he's a gifted, gifted While actor. it may have been uh, acting to Artie, it's part of George's everyday reality. Really, guys, this was cruel, not humorous. <laughs> uh, so, so, And there was a bunch of those who said it was mean. Uh, but uh, also those who just thought it was great. The fact that George didn't walk off the show or worse, just refuses to come in on the show today, goes to show the kind of person you all have the pleasure and honor of working with. George is awesome. Best thing next to keeping Artie, the, the new Abbott and Costello. <laughs> uh, here's another one, finally. The Artie comes out of the closet bit was hysterical. One of the best bits the Stern Show has ever done. Nice job, Artie. Good thinking, Benji. You guys rock. Bravo, Benji. Yeah. Uh, and finally, I get why you thought it was a funny idea, but you guys are assholes. <laughs> By the way, Artie, you are a good actor. Who knew? Lesson for George, never let your guard down. It's never over. <laughs> I thought I, exactly, thought I knew now how to uh, navigate this show. Every, you know, you keep coming up with new ways yeah. of shattering this trust that I have in people uh, in the world. By the time we're done with you, you won't trust anybody. Uh, even you. I still have a grain of trust in you. By the way, a lot of people are turned off to Hank Azaria now Ooh. because they're such George fans. That yeah. Hank Azaria is a real asshole. He seems to be a real waste of sperm. That's what it says here. <laughs> wow. You know, yesterday was brought up whether uh, Richard was retarded. Ralph put out the theory that he thinks Richard Christie is retarded. And someone said, no, we think J.D. is stupider. And J.D. came in to defend himself by saying his articulateness.
<laughs> makes him sound more stupider. <laughs> so he disagrees and he is yeah, not that retarded. That is a t-shirt. I gotta print that up. <laughs> did anybody? I didn't hear the wrap-up show yesterday. Did anybody really believe in Ralph's theory? Because I gotta tell you, I I thought about it and. He made a couple of good points, but um, there's no way Richard's retarded, right? No. no, I think a lot of people thought it was a, a thing of coming from the sticks, but who knows? I don't think Richard's retarded. Well, the other thing that was brought up on the wrap-up show is that if you were in Richard's element, he would be the superior being. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Well, well I got his that. Future, really. yeah. what, what planet is it where you you know you can keep shit in your ass and that makes you intelligent? Uh, what is that? Doing? I got to speak for Richard. You know, uh, Richard and his girlfriend Christy took a uh, took Brad me to uh, Tavern on the Green for Well, that shows you how stupid he is. Yeah. It was, he was in Christmas <laughs> Heaven. I mean, that is gorgeously decorated. He's a guy who lives in New York and he goes to Tavern on the Green? Uh, <laughs> isn't that reserved for tourists? Yes. Uh, pretty much. But, you know, you should not be the victim of your own sophistication. Though. Right. I'm an unashamed tourist, you know? I've been, well, I mean, you don't I used live to live here. In New you York. can be. No, I lived here in the 60s. <laughs> I lived here in the 90s. But you don't live here now. I don't live here now. How was the food at the, at the uh, Tavern on well, the Green? Well, it was good? Tavern on the Green. <laughs> but it was green. The, why can't Tavern on the Green have good decor? Did you get the rubber fantastic. steak? Do you realize Tavern on the Green would be the most... You can't eat that decor. Everyone would go to Tavern on the Green every day. Well, I day. don't go for yeah. the decor. I mean, to go for the food. I go for the decor. Well, well, well you know... You could have both. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be too <laughs> much of a true. stretch. I mean, it's funny that, that the Tavern on the Green is the most beautiful restaurant in Manhattan because it's right in Central Park. It's the only restaurant in Central Park, yeah. and it's a beautiful view. What a fantastic mm. sight. So why not just improve the food and then have yeah. the most it, killer restaurant? It probably would cost too much money. Would it? Yeah. Exactly. There's, there's well, only, it already only, costs too much money. You know, there's money. only so much room in the restaurant. They've got to do like a turnover. They're getting people in there anyway. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have, you know, to pay for a really great chef, and you know, you have to charge $800 for a steak. That's dinner. like, you know, that reminds me of, this is actually the truth in baseball wrigley field is such a pleasant place to go it sells out whether the cubs suck or not right <laughs> it's just good to hang there so it's yeah good. people will go and that's right. the same thing with tower down the green it probably cost uh, to get a great chef in manhattan that's a lot of money and it's some fresher food or not something not every like. great chef has made a name for themselves yet yeah well Richard, i don't think they're going to spend any time going to look get for the, the chef one. from Tico taco taco <laughs> <laughs> richard uh, how was your evening with george and it Brad? was beautiful oh my god they had we sat right next to a Christmas tree. Oh, that yeah. We, lo we, we were next to a window. You see all the Christmas lights outside, and it was snowing while we were eating. So it was it was perfect. And, and I walk in. It, it, the uh, entry hall is draped in red velvet. Yeah. Wasn't that magical? Yeah, it was. And I had uh, hot apple hot cider hands? with rum and... Oh, yeah. It was, it was Hot tawny. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I like the food. I had the crab cakes. I thought they well, were good. Well, of course you did. You don't know. You don't eat Tico Taco. Tico Taco, you <laughs> cried when they closed. <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you try it, Robin. Oh, please. <laughs> so I there you go. Know. That was very nice. In fact, Beth said to me, I'd like to go to dinner with George and Brad. I said, well, maybe we'll do it. I'll, the next time he comes around, we'll take him to dinner. Oh, we had a great time. Oh, it was yeah. a beautiful, beautiful experience. Yeah. I, I, well, thank I, you, I, Richard. Next thank time you. around, I'll get you, George. We'll yeah. Yeah, maybe right. you can have a better meal. <laughs> no, I had a hot dog for the be main kind, course. Robin, be kind. Is he unsophisticated, George? Was he? Uh, was he very, very? I don't know. Was he, did he use his napkin and fork oh, and spoon? And you can be truthful, George. I won't get offended. No, anymore. he was on his best matters. He didn't eat with he his just feet. Blended in with all the tourists. All right. Didn't drink too much. No, he didn't. As a matter of fact, he said, "You know, we got to be up tomorrow morning, so I'm limiting myself." I see. I'm limiting so, myself yes. to a quart of vodka. <laughs> how many hot? How many hot rums did you have? Just I think you two. had two. Just yeah. two. Yeah. All right, good for you. And that was over a two or three hour stretch. So. And how is Brad with George? Do they interact? Uh, yeah, they're nice great. Oh, they're such a sweet couple. Brad never <laughs> punches George or anything. No, like I mean Brad. Brad, you know, kind of rolls his eyes at him once in a while. Oh, and I got a couple of kicks on the shin. Oh, did you? <laughs> you little devil. But it's so uh, they're they're awesome. They're great together. All right. Well, there it is. It's one big happy family. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Very fascinating. Well, there you go. Richard is not retarded. It was a lovely evening. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Richard... He can hold up his end of the conversation? And yeah. Hey, and what's it like to fuck a guy in the ass? <laughs> I've uh, never done that. His girlfriend. Have you got all met her? Yes. She's yeah. delightful. Yes, she is. Yeah, she's very nice. She's I'm way too good for him. I'm very <laughs> impressed that Richard was able to get someone like that. Yeah, we still don't know how it happened. <laughs> she's a delight. Let's see him hold on to her. <laughs> Hopefully.
least you'll wake up one day. George, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Howard? Hey. I'm just wondering, man, when are you going to bring George back? You miss him already? Oh, man, you got it, dude. I like this guy's call. He misses George Takei already. And he's George. <laughs> yeah, his name is George, too. I just having this George from L.A. We didn't even start the show yet, and he misses George. I know. He didn't even know George wasn't here. George could have been a surprise guest. I miss him, too. No one has said anything bad about what I'm drinking or eating yet. <laughs> now yeah. about him. So annoying when, like, you're you're eating. <laughs> you were eating extra amounts, I think, in front of him just to freak him out. Maybe I was, subconsciously I was trying to be rebellious against him. I yeah. think that's your general nature, that yeah. you would do that. Yeah, yeah it, it just hit me because, like, last week I noticed, like, you were eating. Like, you couldn't even stop when we were on mic to stop eating. And I went, it must, it must be because George is sitting there, like, staring and at George everything. And George would stare. Oh, yeah. He, he's fascinated. It's almost like he's turning Artie into a zoo animal. And, like, <laughs> she's just put you in a cage. You watch me well, eat. When I, when I would be eating, I could, you know, you could feel uh, someone staring at yeah. you. Yeah. You know, the eyes are on you. <laughs> and I look over and it, was, it would just go, oh, the butter. <laughs> when, I don't know if this is universally true, but it must be like when I'm eating, I cannot stand when people watch me. Of course me. not. No one wants that. I mean, I, don't know. I mean, I just hate eating in front of people. And, and even like, you know, <laughs> when I lived on Long Island, I would take my bowl of food like you know when i feed my dog something my dog like if i give him a I give her a biscuit she'll take it and run it into the away, other room with yeah. yeah and you know part of that survival instinct because you don't want anybody else grabbing your food right but at the same point mine was like i would take my bowl and whip it downstairs but maybe it's sort of the same thing. It comes yeah. from that same kind of thing. Yeah, but do you, do you dislike when people watch you eat? I hate it. Sometimes yeah. I sit, catch myself eating, and I hate to see it. I'm okay in the restaurant if I'm sitting at a table with people, but right. I hate it. But it's even worse when it's a uh, elderly Asian gay science fiction icon. <laughs> <laughs> How many of those are there? <laughs> you had the one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he observes you eating. Okay. Yeah. I know what you mean. And, like, I'd look over because I, I, I like watching that dy dynamic between Artie and George. And you'd look over and George would, like, to, just blatantly looking at Artie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> ashamed. Watching everything. And, and, and with a look like this, like, this is a visual, but, you know. Yeah. It was disgust. <laughs> it was. If you were going to put disgust in the dictionary. Yeah, and, and looking over what's going on. And sort of he feels protective. I guess, like, like he's, he loves Artie. Yeah, like like he's... Trying to guide him. Yeah. And, like, you're not going to guide him during a four-hour radio show, you know? Yeah. You're just not. But then the final uh, blow was when George brought in the chocolates. Yeah. Oh, man. He, he brought know. in like, that box of A week of that. Of yeah, yeah. He go, he, a week of, like, telling Artie what a fat fuck he is, basically. And then, you know, with all the, with all the right sentiment behind right. it. But, you know, and caring. And then at the end, he says, I have Christmas gifts for you yeah. all. And he hands us this big box of chocolates. Of course, none of us open them up except Artie, Artie. goes, hey, okay, Christmas gifts. That's right in. Yeah, like, very, that was very Belushi. Asking well, in a way, I wanted to, like, show him. I wanted to make him feel guilty well, uh, watching me really? eat. Well, so Artie opens up the chocolates, and they're these big, fattening Godiva chocolates with truffles and whatever that is. They're like, heaven in a box. Heaven in a box. They were really good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Artie starts eating them. And George then's like, oh, you can only have one a week. <laughs> one your ass. I'm like, George, could you only have one cock? And Robin, you had the best line because you totally, bu he even said, you busted me. Robin goes, well, you probably didn't put that much thought into these <laughs> gifts. I mean, if you really cared about Artie, would you be giving him a box of chocolates? Yeah. You know, I got him a case of Jack Daniels. I, I know, know that. You, you know. You're kind of thoughtless, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in another way. And, uh, yeah, in a whole different way. Uh, I think, Godi I don't know if Godiva makes an elliptical machine, though. <laughs> <laughs> My defense, you know, I don't think now I would get you a case of Jack Daniels. I felt so bad. Yeah, now you'd probably give me a case of heroin. <laughs> right. I just have it imported. I, um, <laughs> I, you know, I felt so bad about that prank when I, you know, I, I had a busy weekend because I had a fly and everything. Oh, I but can't on, play my answering I, message. On the plane, I started to, like, write a letter to George. Like, really? You know, but because I, I, I really felt so bad, and I know he didn't care ultimately at the end of the week, but... Every sense I had at the end wanted me to put the P.S. By the way, I really gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really gay. You really wanted to you know bring what? him along. I got, you know what? I, I've got to play you. I still have Artie's message on my machine. I should just take a. I know I don't take a break this early, but maybe I'll take my break. Go over because while we're on the topic, I should do it. Yeah. Let me run into Scott's studio. And, Get the message. Yeah, I could do it live here on the air, but. 
I have a whole complicated answering machine thing, and it takes forever for me to get the message up. Yeah. Unless you want to hear all that. I don't know. You want to go through that? How long does that take? That takes a long time. Uh, it's all about how many commands is it? It's Mine's a, like a voice three. command thing. Yeah. Oh, oh you got to speak? Yeah, I got to go next mm. message, and then I go, what's it say? Right, right, right. And then if we want to stop it. Do, do you mind me playing that, by the way? I mean, of course not. Yeah, okay, no, of course right. not. Uh, hmm. How do you dial out here? I See, so you don't even know that. You can't even start the process. Yeah, all right, all right. Look, let me go take a... Fred will knock out like two or three commercials. Sure. That's all the time I need. Hey, Scott, can you be ready in there to tape? Response. Scott's ready. Scott's ready? All right, on your mark. Fred, are you ready? We're ready, dude. <laughs> Get set. Go. You know, I went back and recorded your um, voicemail. All right. But it, I don't know. But what? It's it's actually in light of the prank and everything. I don't know if you even need to hear it because it's just already explaining to me what happened. But I remember at the time it got me like you know laughing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear it? Oh yeah. I, I, you know now I'm intrigued. You spent all that time yeah, getting it's it recorded. Just, it's just, this is already right after he did the George Decay thing and to show you you know he's George, a little shaken. He's shaking because he's like oh George is going to think we're you know we, I just did the worst thing in the world to George. I came out to him and, uh -huh. and then Artie didn't even tell him he was kidding. So George went home thinking right. George spent the whole evening thinking Artie was no way well, yeah because what what got to me this is as soon as I got back to my apartment it was really eating that way I mean so I. I called Howard. Uh, this is Artie feeling guilty. Yeah, basically. Right. That's what's funny have. about he it. Yeah, here he is. Howard, it's Artie. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon uh, here on Tuesday. I'm sorry to bug you, but um, I did that George Takei bit where I went into Sal and Richard's studio, just me and him, and I <laughs> I essentially came out to him. And, um, I, you know, it, people were asking me how it went, and the answer is it actually went too good. Uh, you'll see the tape, but I wanted to give you a heads up because I, I feel so awful about this. <laughs> it's one of the worst things I've ever done. It's worse. So I'm listening to this message. Now, mind you, I've gotten a call from Gary on my voicemail before this going, both, you better call. Uh, Audie's all, you know, freaked out. And, and I'm like, oh, no, what did these guys do? And I had forgotten completely right. that Right, you didn't Artie, even remember the bit. I forgot the bit. We discussed it like a month or two ago, and I didn't even remember that Artie was going to come out to George. So now I'm like... Like, uh oh, what the hell is on this tape? <laughs> and any gay joke I've ever made. He fell for it hook, line, and sinker. We were in there for like 15 minutes. He's such a nice guy. He's such a wonderful man, like <laughs> compassionate. He uh, he shared like secrets of his when he came out that he dealt with to try to help me with my problem. And he, he started to tear up. And I actually, uh, after I figured we had enough good stuff, I actually stopped him because... Uh, when he finds out it's a joke, the more personal stuff he told me, I'm sure the matter will be if he's capable of getting mad at anyone. Uh, this is going to be like a punch in the gut to him. He was so nice and cool about it. Well, now I'm thinking, oh, my God, this must be yeah, some what tape. the hell did George tell? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we added it to tape, too, before we added it. Yeah, two and a half minutes came out of that tape, <laughs> which George was uncomfortable with on the air. But I can still swear what George had edited out, he's told us in the past. Oh, really? Yeah. He has on the air. I mean. But okay. there was one little oh. detail he said in the tape that I don't think he ever mentioned. Oh, all right. Yeah. And he hugged me at the end, and I almost started crying, and I'm not even really gay. <laughs> My you point is, be. Gary's looking at it. I want you to take a look at it, you too, and decide what we want to do. I mean, now, of course, there's no way out of it. I forgot how we wanted to end it, so I thought the funniest thing would be to, to tell him that, you know, I, I finally got some FU money put away, and I'm not worried about my career as much as I used to. So uh, this week or maybe tomorrow on the show, I was going to come out on the air, and I needed George's support uh, sitting beside me while I came out to the audience and to you guys. And he, would go, and he was like, oh, anything you need, I'll be there. Uh, I'll do whatever you need. I'll, I'll be holding your hand and, and I, he couldn't have been cooler so I left that option but we really you really got to look at the tape and uh, I don't know 
it, it went too good, and I'm worried about it. I feel awful about it. I really do. Um, so, again, uh, you don't have to call me back. I just wanted to give you a heads up, and we'll talk in the morning if you want. But uh, Now my mind is racing, going, uh-oh, I better call everyone right. and find out what's going on here. God. You should see it. It's crazy. I can't believe some of the shit that came out of my mouth. I told them I, I fucked the comic in the ass on the road. He fucked me in the ass. I said we made sweet love. He blew me. I blew him. He, felt, he, he believed every word of it. So, all right. I'm sorry to bug you. But I'll talk to you later. So I get that message, and I'm like, oh, you know, uh oh, like maybe I. Maybe this is going to be a train wreck and we lose George as our announcer. All right, yeah. Because George is such a great guy. I really do love the guy. Yeah. And then, and then I had a whole thing with Sal and Richard I wasn't even going to tell any of you about. What? What? Well, you know, like, but I, I actually, to tell you how serious I am, I had a t meeting with them off the air about this because, you know, I was really pissed. And I Something told, they did? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I love those guys' energy and everything. Sal and Richard will, you know, die for the show. Yeah, absolutely, but, they, yeah. but but they they like they grabbed George in the hall, and they had him come in and sing song parodies that they wrote. Oh. And you know, George is such a nice guy; he'll do anything for the show. And I, I heard these songs, and I I told them, "Hey, I'm not going to air them because, I mean, I'm going to air them now because I wouldn't do it when George was here." Because I I said you. I said, could you guys just not grab George in the hall? Like, have enough brains to go to Gary first. Uh-huh. And tell Gary you're thinking of a song that you want George to record. I said, any time... I said, I said, look, these are the common sense things. Whenever there's, like, a, a celebrity or a guy who's important to the show, you guys just can't grab the dude and start doing shit with him. You know, first of all, you don't even know that George isn't exhausted after the show and wants to just fucking chill out a little mm -hmm. bit. And just, I said, just check with Gary. So they assure me they're going to check with Gary. What happened when they didn't um, check with Gary this time? Uh, yeah, well, they, well uh, they're treating George like a whack pack, is what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, that's what and they're that's doing. That's cool, you know. Here, here's some, here, I'll, I can't even listen to these because it upsets me so mm. much. <laughs> I was so upset I hauled their ass into a meeting and tried to explain common sense to them. Well, good luck on that one. Brad's big balls, Brad's big balls, hanging in his underwear. When they're in my face, I'll take a taste and spit out the pubic hair. Brad's big balls, Brad's big balls, smacking oh on my rear. Cause juicy nuts slapping on my butt makes me one happy queer. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine Poor George? George. Yeah, I First mean, he's got Artie, then he's got Sal yeah, and yeah. Richard. It's a, like landmines yeah. everywhere he turns. Well, here. Believe me, before I did my bit, I uh, I needed papers signed. I, <laughs> and it was a month before I. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like he might not want to sing the word. Qu I'm a happy. I'm a queer, happy you know? queer. And he's such a good Brad's guy. Be Brad, number one, is such a private person and doesn't like right. all this notoriety. No, but, but, but like George could have been very offended by this and said, "You know what? I've had enough of this shit." They could have just blown the whole thing. And Brad probably is offended by it. No and, one yeah, Brad. and George and goes George, home to Brad, and he's very affected when Brad is upset. He's got to deal with it, yeah. I'm dreaming of a white penis <laughs> Just like the ones I used to blow <laughs> I'm not saying they're not funny. They're funny, but you could have had anybody have a sing that. It could have been a disaster. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. For the joke, yeah. I don't think you need George the Kid. Well, George does love singing, you can tell. Oh, he does. He, yeah. he lo wishes to be on a musical on Broadway, I'm sure. With a sweet pink glisten Even when it's pissing it's an <laughs> oh my Jeez. god Hardy the cuddly muffin works on the howard stern show he has a big round belly that feels like pizza dough <laughs> He's covered in soft brown bear fur, <laughs> bear fur And has a plump brown butt If you're in need of a Pepsi Grab two quarters from his gut Well, anyway, mm. that one wasn't so offensive except How Hardy. much did they have him singing? It sounds like oh. a long recording session. Well, what happened is... <laughs> yeah, Gary, finish the story. The, um... 
the thing is, I, after I heard this, I go, guys, I go, my God, I can only imagine, you know, what you asked them to do that they didn't want to do. And they showed me one that they showed to George, and George showed to Brad, and Brad wouldn't let him do. Yeah, because it was... It was something about a glory hole. Yeah, but sticking your cock through a glory right, hole. I mean, right, th these, right. are the, these are the ones he would do. So, like, like th they could have easily just offended the shit out of him. Yeah. And I wouldn't have known what was going on. And then everyone... <laughs> and then he everyone... thinks this is coming from you. Oh, exactly. I, thought of a great new, I thought of a great new joke to play. <laughs> but, but wait a second, though. Everyone... But everyone... You know, I love George. Yeah. And, and, and George is a part of this show. And, like, you can't just grab him in the halls and ask him to do stuff. And then he assumes I've sanctioned Approved this. Approved yes. Because he trusts me. So I try to explain to them, like... It's, I love that they wrote songs and thought of something for George to do. Just submit it so I can Absolutely. see it. Absolutely. You know, so much goes on here. And they can here. maybe put it on a schedule for George so he, you know, won't be overwhelmed with all this stuff. And despite what everybody thinks, I don't know everything that goes on around here. Obviously. Yeah. In fact, I try to keep Obviously, myself... Obviously, you're not in control at all. I, I try to keep myself in the dark. <laughs> I, should call, I, should, I was going to say, I should call George and say I heard the one about me and go... Dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I thought we were friends. I mean, that's really offensive. Yeah. Bear I, You know what? I couldn't even do that. It's not anymore. Bear fur. Uh, he, he would, he would, uh, it would, his head would explode. Uh, Sam, what is it? Hank Azaria recently uh, hey, gave, an, gave an interview. Yeah. And uh, he said that George Takei was creepy. That's why he never got asked and to be back. And that's why he was, yeah, off that's the That's why show. he never got asked to be back on The Simpsons. Uh, well... We, Okay, this isn't true. And so, um, and, uh. Well, what do you mean it's not true? You think Hank's lying? Are you I don't think Hank's lying. I'll tell you what ha really happened on The Simpsons. We were all big fans of, uh, Star Trek TOS, the original series. And so in the <laughs> early days of the show, if we Who had. Who knew that? Fan, no one. That's why he had to tell you what he was talking about. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, if we had a chance to uh, um, bring someone from that show on to do a voice, we're all very excited to meet them. And uh, we had a sushi chef, and I wanted to hire a Japanese actor, so they brought me a list. There was one person on it. It was George Takei. Yeah. And uh, we put him up in a hotel. And to, we had a PA pick him up to bring him to the table reading. And the PA was a kid named Joe Boucher. And this was the most gorgeous young man you've ever seen in your life. He Even easy. Sam, who's a heterosexual, could see. I don't know that he's a heterosexual. Well, I, listen, I think... Whether he's an L.A. heterosexual. No, beauty, no matter what. But All right, go ahead. This guy with muscular, is... long hair. He wore these flannel shirts. He's okay. Wow, Sam. Model, beautiful. <laughs> and I guess, um, you know, George, he made a big thing about coming out, but... Like, when you meet him, he seems gay, right? Right. Right. <laughs> so, I guess he flirted with Joe, and this is 20 years ago, and, you know, times have changed. <laughs> and Joe was a little um, uncomfortable so, with it. So he got creeped out. Well, no one got creeped out, you know, but it, it, it was, it was, you know, he commented on it. Joe brought it to your attention? He brought it to our attention. Uh. So... We were doing the rewrite after the table reading, and normally, uh, with an actor, you just send them the new script the next day, right? But because there was this interesting thing going on, I decided to send every scene over as we did it, and I, I made Joe go to George's <laughs> hotel room. <laughs> Oh my God! So, you creeped everyone out. Right, you're so the creepy I've been in there like five times, <laughs> and I don't know what happened in the room. I'm not. I'm, I really, honestly, I don't. I don't know what happened. But he came back finally, and he said, "I'm not going." Back. <laughs> he said, "I'm not going back there. I don't care. He can get his pages the next day." Fire me! Uh, Fire me! Yeah. So, hey, do you get a piece of the um, Simpsons movie? Robin did a story yesterday that said the movie generated over five hundred million. Um, I, I expect to see some money from the Simpsons movie. Do you? Yes. But you expect to, or you 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 just you get haven't it. yet. I mean, you will get it. Yes. Wow. Well, he's into everything. I haven't seen it. And you haven't. You didn't do an ounce of work on it, right? Well, I serve in a check cashing capacity. Right. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even have to work yeah, on. Yeah, they Simpsons. just send him money. He's the creator. 
I haven't seen the show since the fourth season. Wow. It's now 16 years ago. He's Vija. So, so anyway, I so think... So great. <laughs> I think because of... I kept sending Joe over there. George got the impression that he had this beautiful manservant. Oh. Well, whatever. Like, we sort of at his beck and call. So we were going to do the reading before the uh, the record. and uh, We tried to get Hank Azaria to call into our show to talk to George about this. But instead he called yeah, Well, Hank has called me. Listen. I just got home from a poker game, and I had spoken to Hank earlier today. He was ambushed by the Howard 100 News team <laughs> outside of his theater, <laughs> and he was very disquieted <laughs> by it. Yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that. I don't even know what that news department's up to, but they get me into more, si yeah, they get me into more situations. Well, they, they kind of up the stakes. Well, don't you think they've gotten a little... Uh, Aggressive? I think so. I don't know, though, but they want to interview Hank. Just my personal opinion, like, uh, like there's a lot of interesting characters on this show. There's a lot of really talented, interesting people, but I think that Steve Langford's the weirdest. <laughs> like, who, who goes and stalks him? Well, what is your... Um, they just handed me, the news department just handed me the four-minute Hank Azaria interview, which J.D. is just pulling some parts of right now. Great. But okay. yeah, Steve Langford got him. So well, I like I that, that, though. There, I mean, I mean... All these messages from Hank. So anyway, so the next day at the table reading, uh, George's throat was a little ticklish before the reading, so he stopped the proceedings, and he uh, asked Joe to bring him some hot tea with honey. <clears throat> and Joe did it. And he took a sip, and he said, uh, Joe, you are my angel. <laughs> so this rugged guy, so the rest of the... <laughs> so it creeped everyone out. It, but, well, he said creeped, but we love George, and, you know, and it caused, it, it, it caused a little stir, you know. So and he was never asked back, so the story is accurate. Not, that's not why he was never asked back. We love George, and uh, 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 it's just because on The Simpsons, like, you know, we were struggling a little bit. We didn't have a giant budget. So, like, Hank can do, you know, all you guys can do it, too. They can do a really good imitation of him. So if it came up for one line or something, we would have Hank do it. But we love George. And all right, Hank it's all cleared that. up. I think he was playing to the crowd a little bit. So why did so Hank call you? He wanted he didn't want the news department on his he back? He wanted to know whether he should... Um, he, uh, <laughs> He wanted, listen, I can, I, I got all these messages and all this other guys in turmoil. Clearly, he wants to know whether he <laughs> should get this call in to back. you, whether he should call George personally. He wants to know what the no, you should call into us. news yeah. department. Uh -huh. I, called his, I called his management. They never returned my call. Mm. He was, and then he was, he wanted to call in and then he had to, to talk about his, uh, to, to, to confer with his publicist. We just wanted him to talk to George. Now George isn't here. All right, hey, Sam, I got to run. All right. Well, Thanks. Merry Christmas. Thank Happy you. Happy holidays. Hey, Howard. Yep. You know, it's funny. I had a similar incident that, that he was talking about with George. You know, when we first started with George, we brought him in to be our uh, announcer that first week. And I actually stayed at the same hotel that George stayed at the night before our first broadcast. And I remember, you know, I had to bring George the lines and go to his room. And I remember being, like, a little bit nervous and everything, which I don't know why, because I didn't think George would really be interested in me. And I went there, and absolutely nothing happened. And now I'm wondering what I did wrong. <laughs> you look like you. That's like, what we're but wrong. he didn't hit on me or anything. You are a, a rugged young man. Yeah. And he's in a committed relationship no, now. He's not hitting on dudes. I was just saying, like, I had that exact incident and nothing happened. Right. But what makes you think you're a hot stud? <laughs> well, I didn't hear that the guy was a hot like stud. Gary's all nervous. Gar clearly this guy Sam would have fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy how was carrying on. <laughs> Sam was carrying yeah. on about the guy. I mean, holy shit. You're not that guy. Right. You're not the guy in the flannel shirt. I guess not. No. Well, that's why. He's I'm, insulted. I was really nervous, Bulls. <laughs> Nothing happened. Nothing, Nothing happened. <laughs> I went over to a gay man's room and he didn't want me. I, you know, I don't know I what. Was it, shot, I don't know what it is with straight men who think that every gay guy wants to fuck because I went to his room. Yeah, that's and, you. No, but gay, you always think that, like, oh, I'm going to a gay man's hotel. I know room. you think that. Oh, you don't think most straight men think that way? No, oh, I certainly don't. I've never had any indication a gay guy wanted to fuck me. <laughs> no, but you don't always. Think I know that. every gay guy doesn't want to fuck me. <laughs> Well, that's uh, right. so, so I'm different than the guys you're meeting. Unfortunately for me, that's not true. Gay Most guys hit on me. Every gay man wants me. <laughs> I'm a gig icon. I'm the Betty Grable for gay men. <laughs> I'm a poster boy. There's something weird going. You guys know that gay dudes always I'm hit on me. I'm cheesecake. 
I was really nervous going over to George Takei, and then he didn't hit on me. I said, "What's for, what am I doing wrong? Am I losing my power? Do I need to shave? <laughs> yeah. If you go to Gary Page 2, in green are uh, two clips of Steve Langford accosting Hank Azaria. Mm. I'm going to hear this. Mm. I got to answer the charges, Hank. What do you say, Gary 2? Yes, okay. in green. Mr. Azari? Yeah. My name is Steve yeah. Langford. I'm a reporter for Howard 100 News. Is serious? I wanted to ask you about George Takei. Uh, how did they find him? Well, he's doing a play. He's doing a play. Oh. So this is outside the stage door. It's easy to find a guy doing a play. Yeah. Yeah. You have to say, Steve's a guy yeah. who will stand out there for four hours. No problem. Wait till he gets what he needs. Okay. He's like Hinkley. I talked to Sam Simon about it. He said, of course, he thought you were just kidding around, but, you know, Stern fans were in the unusual position of uh, defending a gay man uh, against you. Oh, dear. Uh, it, it's a true story. I apologize to George. I never meant to hurt his feelings in any way. He's a great guy, and I love him. You know, but I shouldn't have used the word creepy. I mean, poor George Takei. I mean, he's, you know, a sweet guy. He doesn't need me saying saying snarky stuff about him. I love him. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Right. So and, uh, I apologize to George. Sorry. That's good. That sounds All right. nice. All right. That then didn't sound... Didn't Steve that... go away after that? No. That didn't sound sincere. <laughs> I Steve thought he was sincere. Yeah, I think that was sincere. Was. That, that, was. that sounded like it. I'm going to apologize now. Get out of my face. No. You know what it's like when you're, in front of a, when you're in front of a crowd and you're getting laughs? You go with it, and then it's like, fuck, I'll, I'll deal with the problems later. And... I he think probably he never that. thought it would get beyond. Yeah. Who's playing that stuff? But We're the only ones who care. Yeah. <laughs> Sam said that uh, he kept sending uh, Joe back and forth to the hotel where where George was. Yeah. With script pages in, in order to give uh, uh, George more uh, more, more fodder. Opportunity. Yeah. To, to well, that's what I mean. That's how it was all taken. It was never. It was always just funny, you know. And. Uh, we, we did kid around about that for a long, for many years after that. But it wasn't, you know, meant as a slam to George. I actually really do feel bad about that. He's the sweetest guy in the world. And, you know what I mean? Such a nice guy. And, in fact, it's, it's, it's beautiful the way Stern fans, you, you never would think, but Stern fans are defending this guy against you. I know. It's, uh, you know, well, you know. I feel bad about that, but you know I'm a huge fan of Howard too, so I couldn't believe that I got on the, on the wrong side of Howard. I felt bad about that too. You know. You didn't get on anyway, the wrong my side. My apology, my apologies, George. Live long and prosper, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get on the wrong side of me. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Just so you know, I mean, it was a four-minute interview. He apologized like five or six times to George. Yeah, it's enough. Leave him alone. <laughs> yeah. There's no more explaining. Back off, Langford. Yeah. I believe George could have been a little creepy. Well, if they're sending Howard, the guy over and over. Howard, I, have, I have one question to ask for you. Do you think this is an, a little homophobic that they let him go because he was talking to a male intern that way? I mean, had it been a, a male star saying, thank you, Angel, if she brought him a cup of water, would that have gotten the same response? Would that person no. have been dismissed? I haven't he met, wasn't dismissed for that. I haven't met one really good comedy writer in L.A. who isn't homophobic. Right. <laughs> Just ask him. It's so almost a prerequisite. Yeah. It's a requirement. Uh, but they're saying they let him, they just didn't rehire him because they didn't have the budget. I don't right. know. There it is. Uh, whatever. Who cares? That's what I say. <laughs> I think it's our, uh, Yeah, I think we can give him, you know... Absolution at this point. What's your name? Paul. Paul Cretney. I've been going to conventions in Philly since I was in my teens. I'm in Valley Forge. In Valley Forge Hotel at the convention center there. And also um, in Danton 34th Street in Theron City. I've been going I've been going pretty much all my life. What's so great about Star Trek? Uh the, the stuff they have out now, the, the, the tricorders and all that other stuff, the gear, uh, all the inventions they, they make it up now, you know, on TV, Next Generation, like, like Beam Me Up, Scotty, and stuff like that, the, the transporter, all that stuff is really cool. And do you ever fantasize that you're a Star Trek character? Um, Data. <laughs> Data is my favorite. John Luke Picard. Another good character. He's 
cool. He, he says that I want to engage. <laughs> you like that phrase? He says engage. What's the phrase? <laughs> what is it? He says engage. As he says, he says engage. Which one? He says engage. What phrase? Engage. It's called engage. Uh, engage. Spell that. Engage. Spell. He says he goes like this. Engage. You know, like warp one or warp seven. But what does he say though? He says engage. Like like engage. And he says start up. Like start up the the ship. It means engage. And he moves his finger. Yeah, Captain Picard moves his finger. He says engage. <laughs> and you like that? Do it again for to make sure we got it on camera. He says engage. <laughs> Do it to the camera. Engage. <laughs> I don't know if your record light's on. Do that again. Engage. Oh, wait. Yeah, I need one. Try again. Engage. One more time. Engage. But don't, like, treat this serious because, you know, we're at a serious Star Trek convention. Yeah. Like, when he says it, he doesn't laugh. So, no. you know, do it, like, serious. Okay, engage. Engage. But don't smile, though. He doesn't smile when he does it, does he? No, he does. He does engage. So he does. But, you know, let's let's get into the character. Let's get into the character and look real serious. You're the character, and you're looking in the camera. Okay, the character? Okay. He says, engage, number one. That's it. But we need a little bit more power. Like, you're an authority. Okay. Engage. But no smiling, you're serious. If okay. you want them to engage, you have to tell them and you have to be real serious okay. and no smiling. Okay. And engage. See, I'm still not buying it. I want you to like really get in the character. Okay. And engage, number one. Let's try it again. Engage, number one. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you? And uh, welcome to the show. And I am really happy... To see that all week, our good friend and announcer, George Takei, is here. Hi, George. Good morning. It's been much too long. There's, a, there's been a lot going on in here. Yes, and you know... He's in constant communication with Artie, which is, I find, very interesting. You know, the last time you were here, your first day, Artie was out, and Artie's out again. Isn't He's that out? interesting? Yeah. I hope it doesn't mean I, I have something to do with that. I don't think you do, but there's but a But I do have a lot to talk to Artie about. Where yeah. is Artie? We have I a don't lot know. to cover here. I'm the first person to say Artie's entitled to be sick once in a while, but like he announced yesterday to Jason that he was sick early in the day. What happened was Artie... I don't, I don't, yeah, this, this, this that, was, that was this morning. Oh, that was this morning? Yeah, he asked Jason to come by and pick something up, and then he said he's not coming in. And I think he did that because he didn't want to leave a message. Oh. I don't know what's going on now. I don't either. Yeah. Because let me tell you what this weekend was like. I heard from Artie on Friday. Yeah. Because he got these Yankee tickets that he wanted to give me for the charity. And he was, you know, upbeat, and he was like, you know, I got these tickets, and, you know, like, you know, but Monday is opening day, blah, 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 blah. Then he, you know, I told him about the Rolling Stones thing on Sunday, and he said, oh, I couldn't get a ticket. So I got him a ticket, and he was like, oh, great, gung-ho, I'll meet you there, we're going to have a great time. On Sunday, he called Jim, and he said, you know, I completely forgot I had a family function that I have to do. My mother just reminded me of it. Now, he told me about that family function on Friday. Yeah. But now he was claiming that he couldn't go to the Rolling Stones because of the family function that he had forgotten. Yeah. That sounds to me, and he only woke up at 1 o'clock or something, and now he's got to go to a family function. <laughs> uh, well, why did you say he didn't want to go? Right. And then uh, today he's out of work. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I already knew that I was coming, and I, I hope I'm not being overly uh, self-centered or egocentric. But you think he's afraid to face you? You know, because we have so much to talk about. So I don't think that's it, George, though. I don't think he's... You don't think so? 
You think this is homophobia? Well, that? you know, because he's had a lot of problems over the last three months that I've been, I haven't been here. Yes. That uh, running with uh, high pitch Mike. Yes, yeah. and then the and cupcake. particularly, you know, because uh, he promised that he was going to do a public service announcement for the human rights campaign, and uh, I've talked to the staffer there at uh, the human rights campaign, and she told me that she sent him a script. Ah, uh, yeah. And yeah, he, he read it on the air. Yeah, yeah, he did, didn't he? Yes. And he uh, didn't want to do that, but he asked for some uh, bullet points that he could incorporate, and he wanted to write it himself. Right. And then there's apparently been some conversation between Teddy and uh, Anastasia, the woman at uh, the Human Rights Campaign, and then it stopped. And Anastasia tells me that she's been calling Teddy, and uh, oh. the responses haven't been coming. So Artie's been dragging his feet, and particularly after that run-in with uh, High Pitch Mike, I think he feels a little um, skittish uh. about the whole thing. Uh, and I, you know, I don't. So it know. is your fault that he's not here today. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to ask him <laughs> what his thinking is on that public service uh, announcement because I don't think there's going to be too much credibility to it. No, no, no I don't think so Absolutely either. Absolutely none. <laughs> no, I don't see any. <laughs> any at all. I don't see any remorse or. What do and they then call I that? thought maybe uh, he should just write out a check and give it to uh, the human <laughs> rights campaign, but like a million dollars. <laughs> 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 what was the deal? Every time he says the F, F word, uh, $100. Fag, uh, it would be $100 to your organization. The human rights campaign. Right. And However, that money is tainted money. Well, that's what the uh, people at LifeBeat said. That's right. That's right. And I don't know whether that's going to be uh, Accepted. acceptable uh, How do we clean money? up that money? <laughs> We have to launder it. Launder it. We have to put it through, a, we have to put it through an account. <laughs> Call Elliot Spitzer. He knows how to That's do that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Artie's Cupcake, too, the one that raises money to fight AIDS. Right. They just uh, turned life beat. They turned down uh, Artie's uh, money. But you know, they don't want any more money from Artie Lang. Yeah. Right. Well, you isn't know, that, the thing, that the yeah, you know what? This is, a, this is the toughest thing ever. The hardest part of the whole thing was that there was a check presented for $10,000 that was returned to Crumbs. Wow. They 10, really thousand. are serious. What? Well, Ten thousand. But you know, because it really, I mean, Artie could do so much. You know, because of the the, the people that love him, uh, you know, the, they're the people that you know generally tend to use that word mm -hmm. band get about. <laughs> you think the only Artie fans use that word? Well, no, no, there are more, <laughs> but. Uh, Already could make a significant difference, but well, you're going to have to confront him tomorrow I, I, if he comes. Well, I hope he, he comes in. Yeah. He might stay yeah. out all week. Can I give you a stat? Though. Yeah. So we looked it up, including today, three of the last four of George's appearance. Artie's been out the first day. Wow! wow. Isn't that interesting? That you know what? It, it, I remember last time Artie wasn't here when That's George right. was here. Well, what psychologically could that mean? I'm feeling very self-conscious about that. I don't think it's a conscious. Move. Yeah, but I'm saying, what psychologically is going on that he misses George's first day all the time? I have a thought. Means uh, he's anti-Asian or anti-gay? <laughs> or maybe both. <laughs> you know what I think it is? What, what, yeah. Artie's almost like, there's a part of it, you know, I think that every day Artie gets up and doesn't want to come here. Not because of us, but just because it's hard to get up. And I think that maybe subconsciously he's like... That's George good. is here. They don't need me today. Right. You know what I mean? Like, It'll be a good day to take like, off. Right. It's a good day to take off because they got somebody to talk to. You know, I do have to have the conversation with Artie. We work a four-day week. I mean, it ain't the roughest gig in the world right. to get in here. And he, yeah, th he just, he's missing after a, th you know, a four-day weekend, a three-day weekend. Yeah, yeah, but he goes on on these gigs on, on weekends. No, he wasn't working He wasn't this working weekend. this weekend. No. Well, then that makes it even harder to get up early in the morning. Oh, he's right. had, what, four, three or four mornings uh, of sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> you think he gets used and, to it. And my yeah. first day is always on a Monday. Right. So maybe that could be it. That could be it. Well, all right. Listen, uh, George Takei is here. He is uh, good friend. Something for Artie now. You want to do an announce? <laughs> I don't know if you want to start off the morning with all some right. sort of announcement. Uh, go ahead, uh, our announcer, George Takei. I turn the microphone over to him. Good morning, everyone. George Takei here. We've got bald Republicans... Furry, what well, we don't have this furry cuddly muffin. <laughs> Chocolate breasted Nubians. <laughs> scary Martians. Hemorrhoid inflicted prank callers. Bored big tooth producers. And fat, sweaty, blotchy riders. 
All on the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> Wonderful. We've got it all right here. <laughs> and by the way, as long as uh, we're talking to George right now, tomorrow we'll be playing the newly weird game with uh, George yeah. Takei. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be George Takei and his life mate. Brad. Brad, Brad Altman. Evil Dave versus Evil Dave and his new significant girlfriend. girlfriend. New. Is it? Well, uh, she's a no, year old. More than that. More. Yeah. Blue Iris and her man. So it's going to be a very, very stiff competition. We'll see <laughs> which couple knows each other the best. Who They'll do be... you put your money on? George. Of course. Well, we've been together. You know, you initially we were Brad. calling it uh, the newly wed game. Newly and weird game. Yeah, we're not wed. But right. uh, that's why it's we've weird. Been, uh, been together for a long time. Yeah, I, my money's on you, but we'll see. We'll see. You'll be surprised. You never know who I know what you mean. You, you, yeah, you miss things. Oh, I yeah. still make discoveries about Brad. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be playing for five thousand dollars, provided by HotMovies.com. Ninety thousand adult movies, ten cents a minute. Get in, get off, get out. HotMovies.com. Five thousand dollars. Hot movies. Hot movies dot com. Yeah, a lot of porn on there, and uh, you yeah, want... you get the scenes you want. I think. Do yeah. we get some too? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sure they'll have a gift package <laughs> for you. It's uh, ten cents a minute, so you know that's what's so good about it. Because most times you only need like three minutes of porn to. Get... Do you do computer porn? You know what? I used to love that. Really? I really like that, but Brad doesn't approve. Oh. Does he think that it's cheating? Well, I don't think it's cheating. I mean, you know, we're just watching. We'd be just watching. Right. But why Somehow doesn't Brad approve of you watching porn? He, he just doesn't think it's right. All right, let me ask you something. But you know what? I, I told him. You own a computer, Our right? sex could be better. Uh -huh. I could get so much more excited. Oh. <laughs> let me well, ask you something. Maybe that's what he's having a problem with. You own with. a computer, right? Yes. Okay. And when you learned about the Internet and this porn on there, like any person who enjoys porn, you would watch it alone or with Brad? Well, I'd be watching it. Brad would come in, yeah. and he would... <laughs> He'd find you watching it. That's right. <laughs> and you'd be masturbating watching it, I assume? Well, you know, Brad keeps a pretty short leash on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I couldn't get to that you. point before he get, get checks in. I'm asking you this because I think, I, I think you're being very honest. And, and uh, you know, when I would watch uh, Internet porn... Mm -hmm. I would make sure to lock the door and be alone with the porn. I never want Beth to know that I'm masturbating. You know, I want to keep that from her. If she asks me if I've been masturbating, I'll tell her yes, mostly. I'll be honest. But I don't want her to catch me. Now, you say when you had the porn on the computer... It's I, in the study. It's in the study, yeah, all right. And it's not very There's private. no door. It's not private. Okay. Well, there, no, their there door is there, but we don't lock it. So I assume you would sit there nude in a chair. No. You would have pants on? Well, you know, I'm, I'm in the study. Right. So I'm clothed. Uh, but, but, that in the porn, I, but when you when you log on to the porn site, yeah. if I follow my reasoning, right. Right, when you log on to the porn site, there comes a time where you begin to touch yourself. Is that right. correct? Right. Okay. Do you take your pants off or do you leave them on? I, I, I'm, I'm clothed because I'm in the study. So you're doing this over the pant or under, inside? <laughs> it, well... Uh, the activity is going on. Yeah. Clothed. Clothed. Oh, so you're just... Oh. Yeah. How is that possible? Oh, you mean well, just unzip yourself and then just t stick it out? Right. I see. Now... But, but, the the actual masturbating goes on in the shower stall for me. You mean... Where I really have uh, privacy. Uh, Let me understand something, George. Uh, what? You're watching the porn. You store those images in your head. Yes. And, and you then I shower. And then you take it into the shower. <laughs> George is so clean. But let me ask you something about the shower. Yes. Don't you find the wetness of the shower uh, decreases sensitivity oh, to your no. shaft? And then I uh, lather up, you know, put soap uh, all over my body. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's That's, a whole routine. With absolutely. You luxuriate, so to speak. <laughs> and there's something so exciting about, you know, a, a soapy body. I'm right. running my hand over myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about a soapy body, even if it's yours. <laughs> so you go to a website. Where do you prefer to watch gay porn? What, what, what website would you go to? Well, I get a, you know, uh, Brad comes in and uh, puts a stop to it. All right, so let's say you find a website somehow yeah, you, yeah. that excites you, right. and you go on there and you're watching gay porn. And uh, I assume you like to watch what? Uh, you got any kind of kinky gay porn you like? 
Uh, uh, gay porn, just gay, straight gay porn. Straight gay you porn. You just want yeah. to see two guys. Exactly. You don't want to see. Ones. Do you want to see good-looking guys tie each other up? Do you want to see? Uh, no, no, I don't go in for that. All that sort of what, uh, whipping, stuff. nothing, no, uh, hurting no. each other, nothing like that. No, nothing like on that. each other. Does nothing. it have to be a love no, I, scene, or is it just <laughs> pure sex? Sex, sex, sex. blowjobs, anal, that right, kind of stuff. Right. Okay, all right. You're watching it, uh, and you have your pants on, and then you unzip your fly, and you start to touch yourself. Mm -hmm. Brad walks in inevitably. Mm -hmm. Now, if Brad doesn't walk in, you wouldn't finish right there in the library. You have to go take him into the shower. Well, yeah, I, I, I go to the shower. You will not finish in front of the computer no, because because it's a study. But but well, what's difference is I mean, okay, you know, it's physically a study, but you yeah. have the porn right there. I imagine it'd be more fun to watch the well, images. No, no, no. I just keep it in my mind, keep, keep the juices going, and uh, and right. how long dive into the shower? How long can you watch porn for without having to run into the shower? Well, I I really don't get to watch it that long. Right, because Brad's because, around. Know, Br He's lurking. Brad's computer is there too in the same study. Yeah. Let's say Brad was out of town. If he's uh, well, let's say uh, let's say when he's out, I'm out of town more than he is. Okay, but let's say on a, on, a, on a given day, Brad's out of town. Would you finish off in the library, or would you go to the shower? I've gotten so used to the shower, the warmth of the water, and this. It's and become a thing. Yeah, right. You you look forward to it. That exactly. What if you have just taken a shower? And now you're in the library masturbating. I go back into you the shower. You go right back yeah. into the shower. Interesting. <laughs> you know, I wonder what I the mean, shower he represents. Must love the shower now. <laughs> yeah, I love the sensuous thing. You know, uh, well, Gary Delabate used yeah. to uh, masturbate in front of his computer and then finish into the toilet. Right. Because he didn't want the kids to catch him. So he would run back and forth with the, you know, <laughs> so his wife and kids wouldn't catch him. So we all if, do it our own individual way. So yeah. even if Brad was out of town. It would be, you would still be in the shower. I like the shower. The okay. warmth, the steaminess, and the soapiness. Okay, understood. Now, so you, 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 you do this gay porn, and you like it. And wh why is Brad reacting in a negative way to this? Does he feel it's taking away from the intimacy of your relationship? Oh, you know, uh, Brad feels that he should be the one Right. That I should uh, focus just on him. No fantasies, no nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> when he, well, he's coming in tomorrow, so you can quiz him on but that. I, but I don't understand something. He comes into the room and he goes, does he scold you? Does he, George? He scolds me and he, wow. he uh, <laughs> uh, immediately, you know, disconnects me. He shuts you down. Yeah, he he turns me. off your computer. <laughs> but isn't that wrong? I mean, uh, it you're is a grown wrong. man. I, I mean, it is wrong. You've been in the business a long time. You've, you've established yourself as a, an adult. I mean, and our relationship has been established. He should, you know, he should feel co uh, confident of, of himself. This makes me feel I love him. You Brad, know? Brad's the woman I feel in the relationship <laughs> because if he's a real woman, I mean, only a woman would sit and punish a guy for watching porn. <laughs> this proves what I, my theory that someone takes on the more feminine role. Brad is more femme. Well, he's the um, the woman. He's the organizer. You know, he sort of directs my life. I would assume in a situation where one puts it into the other, you would be putting it into Brad. <laughs> That's what I believe. Am I correct? You you can believe what you want. Am I right or wrong? Well, I, I Brad is listening, <laughs> and I don't. He doesn't want me to. Tell. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever yell at Brad for watching porn? Oh no no no! no. I, I want to do, uh, watch it with him, and you know, and then from there carry on. Yeah. <laughs> so, am I right that you are the dominant in your lovemaking in the sense I, that yes, I am I correct. Am. Wow, I'm the first one. I'm the one that gets it started. You get it going, and you are the one who inserts rather than oh, accepts. Well, I I like to be sucked. You like to be sucked. Yes, yes, I know that. But don't don't pretend here that you don't occasionally uh, go for more intimacy by entering your man. Well, not not that often. But occasionally it's happened. And my point is well taken that he assumes the female role. Right. Right. Okay, thank you. If there has to be a female. I'm right. sorry, Brad. <laughs> Does Brad masturbate? So you mean only you masturbate and Brad's claiming he saves his love for you. That's what he says. That's what he claims. You never walked in on him doing anything. Well, no, no. Wow. I'm, not. I'm shocked. Well, you you know, he's a shocking guy. 
Christ. <laughs> so you've given up masturbation because you love him? Oh, no, no. I, I still do that. You do, but you don't watch porn. Yeah, you know, I, I feel so uncomfortable talking about this because he's <laughs> listening to me. <laughs> well, he needs to know. Let's be honest with one another. Oh, Howard, you are a good interview. Do you You're have... getting things out of me. That... <laughs> no, but George, what I'm saying is, and, and I, I'm being serious now, this is whether you're a straight couple or a gay couple. You enjoy watching porn and stuff. He doesn't. But you've really given up watching porn completely? Oh, no, no. Oh, you do that, it that, anyway? Because he's, you know, I mean, I'm watching and he's, he comes in and puts a stop to it. Oh, so he's always putting a stop to it? Well, I can do get... it. I try to do it when he's in the, you know, futzing in the kitchen or, you know, <laughs> right. far away. Okay. So when he's out of the house, it must be a real great time for you. In a way, he's conditioning you to look forward to him leaving so you can watch your porn, right? Well, I don't think he's going to be leaving too much now. No, he's going to chain you to the... Well, why only one computer? You and Brad share? Oh, no, 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 he's got his two. computer and I got mine. Well, they're both in the library. Yeah. I see. <laughs> now, do you have a stash of, of magazines? Does he object to the magazines as well? Uh, we don't have magazines. Oh, boy. You know, I feel like, I, you know, when I... You know, when I was a kid, and I used to get those muscle magazines yeah, and yeah. hide them, uh, you know, <laughs> because my mother would find them, you know. Right. I feel, uh, you know, like something that like again. that. Yeah. But then the Maybe other, that excites you. But, but the other thing is, you know, at least now, I have Brad. Yes. And uh, I don't think I need those magazines. Ah. You don't although, think. Although, you know, I, <laughs> I do go to some newsstands. Uh -huh. Stand. Uh -huh. What is your favorite gay magazine? <laughs> What? What is your favorite well, gay magazine? Well, we do subscribe to Advocate and uh, Out Magazine. Right. No, but I mean for, for, for porn. For just gazing boy? at the newsstand. Are you a Blue Boy uh, fan? Yeah. 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 What about the Tight Buns? <laughs> <laughs> tight Buns Howard, Magazine. Howard, Howard, Howard. Buns and chest. Are you, uh, I told you. You ever read Latin? Brad is listening. You ever read Latin Inches? Oh, what? Latin no, Inches. No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> How, how do you know so much about this? I'll tell you how I know. How do you know? I had a uh, producer once, before Gary. Yeah. You know, this guy, uh, now he's a general manager of a radio station. But when he was a kid, I said, uh, whenever he would act up, I'd make him go to the newsstand and buy me ten gay magazines. And he had to ask for them by name. He had to Why ask would yeah, you... each one. To humiliate him. Oh. <laughs> Punish him. Imagine a straight guy going to a magazine and asking for Taint magazine. Uh, give you me a copy are of the evil. Yes. You are evil. Oh, oh, I'm the worst. Sadistic. Yeah, I'm the worst person in the world. You are. Yes. Put that poor man through that. <laughs> Lee Davis. Where are you, Lee? Yeah, Lee is still hiding. <laughs> Boy, I can't believe Artie's out today. Look at the conversation he's missing. Yeah. I know. Unbelievable. I'm well, sure he's listening, isn't he? Uh, Does he no, listen in he when sleeps. he's absent? He sleeps, he sleeps if he gets the it. opportunity. He sleeps like a big bear. <laughs> <laughs> he's hibernating. You bet. Brad's big balls, Brad's big balls, penis <laughs> underwear. Under in my face, I'll take a taste and spit out the pubic hair. Brad's big balls, Brad's big balls, smacking on my rear. Because you see nuts slapping on my butt makes me one happy queer. Wow. Christmas was three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you could never play that song enough. My favorite was... I'm dreaming of a white penis oh my. Just like the ones I used to blow <laughs> With a sweet pink glisten even when it's pissing, it sends a tingle through my throat. I'm dreaming of a white penis, a curvy blue vein hard delight. <laughs> I am gay, and I'm horny, that's right, Beautiful. and I love one inside me, Christmas night. Wow. <laughs> A beautiful song. Love oh, by the way, yes. I got to tell you, and I got, I got an appeal to make. Uh -oh. uh, a week from tomorrow, <laughs> April 8th. Yes. On CBS. Okay. 
I'm going to be kicking off a new series called Secret Talents of the Stars. Oh. They've got 16 celebrities. Who are the celebrities besides yourself? Well, you know, we're teamed off uh, in four, uh, groups of uh, four. Yeah. And uh, we open the show, uh, the series. When you say we, you mean you. Uh, the four of us. Yes. Um, uh, on uh, April the 8th. Yes. And uh, the members of uh, the first group are uh, Clint Black, uh -huh. um, country singer. And his secret talent is he does stand. Uh, stand I already sings. Yeah, well, well he sings. that's he's not a, a secret. That's a big secret. That's what he's famous for. You know, <laughs> well, but it's, uh, not revealing their talent <laughs> other than what they're famous for. Right. right. He's going to do, be doing stand-up. I was implying he couldn't sing as well. Oh, yeah. yeah he's yeah, a wonderful right. singer. Right. Okay. So he does stand-up. You sing. Uh, well, I'm singing country songs. Oh. That's my secret. Really? <laughs> and then what, they vote on it? And they vote. Uh, there's Sasha Cohen, who's an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, ice skater, uh -huh. and she's going to be doing uh, contortions. Oh. And, uh, Aside from yourself, it's a horrible lineup, by the way. It, well, the thing is, you know, <laughs> how are they going to vote for us? Because uh, you win. we're all doing different things, right. you know, stand up, right. contortion. How do you compare? Uh, Maya is going to be doing tap dance, and I'm going to be uh, singing country. <laughs> and don't you it's think like you're judging. Don't you think your talent should have been you masturbate the gay porn? <laughs> <laughs> this is CBS, Howard. Uh, CBS. You could have masturbated in the shower <laughs> with the soap suds. <laughs> and, and people, the, the audience votes. Right. So I am appealing to the. Stern Army. So oh, before they even see you, well, you're appealing. Yeah, but you know, my, my, my big George bafflement is, how do they vote? It's like George judging between Mack trucks George, and teacups. George, leave yes. it to us and our audience. <laughs> we will be voting for you in that. That's Mass. right. You're going to win. I'm going to continue on. Right. I'm I'm a competitive guy. Good. We're going to get behind We're going to make sure you go on. We're going to get behind you. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, what is it, Richard? What could you add to this conversation? Well, I want to get back to the jacking off in the shower thing that yeah. we were talking about. <laughs> um, I, I love to do that, too, like George, but I have a problem, and I don't know if you've ever had this, George. Do yeah. you ever get soap in the end of your pecker when you're using soap to do that, and it stings like hell? Well, to give you the details, what I do is I turn the shower, um, the water, down so that it kind of dribbles, you know, and it's nice and warm. I don't understand. My whole body is all soaked up, and I'm feeling the body, but my um, penis is right under that warm liquid water. So, so I don't get soap there. You don't use soap to do. Well, that. I soap. Uh, I use soap on the body. Oh, but, okay. but no warm soap on the wiener. Is, uh, the warm water is on the uh, <laughs> on the penis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll have to try. So and it's that warmth that, that, that. Warm that's good. Yeah. I'll try that. And the soapiness on the body as you feel yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, that's pretty wild. Let me tell you that. Show you a new technique, Richard. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Richard. Yes. Hi, how are you? Yes, okay. Richard, why did you not bathe? What was the point? <laughs> why did I what? Richard, you got to be respectful. Clean yourself. What are you talking about? Richard, you really, you got to have some respect for people. I do. Oh, I'm disappointed, Richard. Who are you? Fred Norris. <laughs> Show a little decency. What are you talking about? We'd rather you be clean. Buddy, you're off your rocker. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm clean. Is there a smell? I'm too far. Hey, I'm hanging up. You're weird. <laughs> Hello? Well, wash that man's rear. What's the matter? Are you a sicko? Oh, my goodness, yes. Why is that? It's disgusting. I'm disgusting? Yes. What makes you think you're not disgusting? <laughs> Richard, you really, you got to have some respect for people. I do have respect for people, but I sure don't have much respect for you because I don't know what your game plan is. We'd rather you be clean. What are you talking about, be cleaned? Clean yourself. I had my shower this morning. Good Lord. <laughs> well, wash that man's rear. What are you talking about, watch, watch a man's rear? Yes. I love those voluptuous mounds. 
man, you've got a problem. A bright asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are you located? It's none of your business. <laughs> what? 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 Huh? What? What do you mean, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, you dork. <laughs> I don't know what your game plan is, pal, but you better quit calling. It's not funny. I know it's not funny. <laughs> I think you belong in an asylum somewhere. <laughs> that rich, I don't believe <laughs> Is this religious or what? Yes. What kind of religion are you? What? What religion are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what religion are you? Baba Booey. <laughs> An Abba Booey? Yes. What the heck is that? Baba Booey. I've never heard of such a thing. Oh, I'm disappointed, Richard. Well, this conversation's over with, pal. Goodbye. Thank you. Good job on that one, George. <laughs> Richard, you spend your time, your life, doing things like that. These Why not? poor victimized people. <laughs> well, that was about the 300th guy I oh called, too. Goodness. It took forever. Yeah, you, what do you call different guys named Richard, and then yeah. you really get one that really responds? Most of them just probably hang out, right? A lot of them do, yeah. yeah. That guy was and great. I had two that were even better than that, but they wouldn't give me a consent. So uh, but I finally got a good one with the consent. Oh, you actually got consent from these poor people. Yeah, you <laughs> have to. Yeah. Oh, you have to. This is this rules about stuff. Can you I suppose. Oh, so, they're yeah. two no. in the can better than that. Oh, they're amazing. But, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get Gary to make some calls. Oh, he my can be God. I almost cried. There was an old lady that was so funny. Oh. And she said no. Oh. I was, like, devastated. Yeah. Maybe she's had a few days to think about it. Yes. I Give just... her some money. Can we give her money? We could try, yeah. All right. Um, I'll talk to you Gary. You just won. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what we could do? We could say, this phony phone call sponsored by, because whoever puts up the, you know, the 500 bucks or something. Yeah. That like would be, be awesome. Like yeah. B-Suticals or something. That would know? definitely help, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank God they don't recognize my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you, Richard. That's thank a great you. one. Good job. Uh, all right. so anyway, right. let's get back to uh, George. Uh -huh. you, uh, yes. George, you uh, yesterday were very anxious to speak with Artie about this public service announcement thing. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm glad to see you here uh -huh. and seeing the same Artie that I remembered from three months ago. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? Well, I mean, you know, I have an imagination. Oh, good. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're the Artie that I remember. And I want to get your thoughts on what is going on with the PSA for the Human Rights Campaign. Well, I, I, I'm not I've been taking it seriously. I, you are, uh, clearly you aren't. All right, well, look, you know, but, but I, I, look, I, I don't think, I mean, it's just not realistic that I'm going to go. I mean, it's a joke. You know, it but is. But I, I, after I came out, after I came out to you, I felt bad that I wasn't really gay after I said I was. That's a portrayal. Well, um, you know what I thought? I could have at least fucked some guy. <laughs> <laughs> do, some of, do some of your homework, huh? Yeah. George, you, you asked, know, let, me, let me put some, let me put some, uh, parameters on this discussion. George, you asked Artie to cut a public service announcement denouncing the word fag or faggot, and Artie agreed to do it. And in fact, Artie said he would pay $100 to this campaign. Every time he slipped. Every time he slipped. Right. Now, since then, you've sent Artie how many scripts? <laughs> well, well, there point. was one script sent to him. Yes. And he awful. didn't want to do that. <laughs> that was bad. And he said he wanted to write it himself. And he asked the human rights campaign for bullet points of uh, topics that they wanted him to hit. That's right. And then there's been some conversation between Teddy and Anastasia, <laughs> who is the uh, staffer that's been assigned. Well, that's as good as no conversation yeah, at all. And it went yeah. back and forth. And then... <laughs> Even that stopped. Much like Hillary Clinton, I'm flip-flopping on this issue. Yeah, Artie, what is it? You stopped the conversation. Are you now saying because, you will not no, make listen, the public service well, announcement? I made an attempt. Howard, I'm telling you, every attempt just sounded like I was goofing on it. I couldn't. Right. Uh, I couldn't. You know, I, look. I, why? I, do you really understand the meaning behind the word fag and how powerful it is? Words have meaning. You know, people. Right. Do you think been... I'm the only one in this room that uses the word fag? Oh no, no. But 
The, uh, uh, you, uh, you pr probably don't know the whole background. Listen to Pharrell and Bubba People have like become bad. <laughs> their skulls have been broken. You know, I know but I, I'm not for that. What do you? I mean, you think because I use the word fag, I'm... So I'm, I'm, you can play a part, you know, because you are who you are. And you, what you am are, I? You are, you are influential on no, a I'm, lot of people. I, I'm not influential yes, on anybody. You are. I am not. You have no idea the number of people, the masses of people <laughs> that you... Influence. <laughs> I can't be. I can get people I pay to do shit for. Hey, hey, As jo already goes, so goes the world. Yeah, right. Well, you're saying that. God help us all. George, you're saying there's a huge con uh, constituency out there who will, who go to Artie shows, who love That's Artie. That's right. And if they see the public service announcement, they'll be educated. And, and you, you think that you I, can, by, you, know, you uh, think recognize your 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 background, how you've been using it, and now you become aware of what the power behind that word is. Does the word hurt you, George, personally? It does. It does. When someone says, hey, you're a fag, it just demeans you, because it takes you down a notch, it right? It suggests all of that other, you know, cruelty that's been hurled. I would never say and that to society, you. Know. You know, for example, I know you <laughs> I would. Uh, not to me, you know, but it, it is, it's a word that affects a whole mass of people in the same way that black people right. were killed, were lynched. You know, and I mean, what's a rope with a loop around it? You know, it's just a rope. But it has power. It symbolizes something horrific. Right. You know, and that's why society has moved to the point where we don't use the, the N word anymore. I well, honestly would rather quit the show than, <laughs> than listen to more of this. I would rather go back to Jersey where nobody cares about the word. You, know, you can count. You know, what, 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 I, we, I, we George, I, you're asking me to be like uh, something I'm not, which is, you know, uh, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, like, Artie, you, you, you haven't got the will. Are you officially saying you will not do the public service? I'll do whatever you want. You know what? Why much like, a, much like a broad, what will shut you up? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my God! Well, okay, people Artie, who shut, shut dick up. won't shut up. What will <laughs> shut me up is if you find that thing in you that what will. What thing? That will. Where is it? Oh God, that will is. <laughs> that will is will in my, uh, right you will is in me. There's will. Oh. All right, listen. I pitch Mike and Artie. Well, pitch, uh, can Mike. we say our April Fool's joke, Mike? We really like each other. Yeah, you're in love. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, Artie? Can you find it in your way to have a detente here? Yeah, I, 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 listen, it's always been his problem. I, I don't I don't understand. It, was, it wasn't my problem when uh, Ron was sitting right here, and I'm talking to him, and Artie had nothing to do with it. Who, and he's Ron? Calling, oh, Ron. And he's calling me gay, and it wasn't my problem when I went into the wrap-up show to talk to John. I, I started his that questions. Day. Was that what triggered it, his calling you gay? Well, uh, that he, didn't help. He's calling me a faggot well, over a dozen times. You clearly are I'm not. Like, you, gay head. What do you mean you clearly are not? How do you, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you are either way. Well, he but, told me. But, you know, I want to yeah. ask. I want to ask you a favor, Howard. George made a point on the wrap-up show yesterday, which was completely glossed over by everybody in the room, and uh, about how talk like this leads to people getting murdered. And I gave Fred a clip of something that I would ask that you play. <laughs> if you would, please. Let me ask you something, Mike. What did I L say? Mike, let, let, me, let, me, let me understand something here. Look. You're a bozo. <laughs> <laughs> now quit that. Quit that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My sense yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Mike, it, it what is going it upset, on? It upsets this? me that you, who is a legend in comedy, a legend Thank in radio, you. laughs at a stupid <laughs> What's fucking funny? juvenile kindergarten no, what's joke. What's funny like that. is I laugh at you too. The two of you fighting yeah, is funny. Yeah, you've written to me. some incredibly uh, vicious and vicious. Hey, what about the quadriplegic uh, people out there? That uh, I'm not worried about the quadriplegic. Why not? Why wouldn't you worry about that? Your father had a choice uh, to fall off that ladder. I didn't oh, push him. Oh, 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 quit that! <laughs> See, I mean, you're just as vicious as Artie. Dude, and yeah. people are and one person just not funny. One person, not an entire group of people. Well, look, listen, to you. listen to me. Father did nothing to you. I don't understand. Really, Mike? Just because you can't father children. Would you please play the clip so you see? All right, what is yeah, this let's clip? Turn this, this, is, this, is a, this is a clip. Five <laughs> days after, but, but, five days after, already said I'm going to bash your gay head in. <laughs> you'll hear what happens in the clip. It's a clip from a talk show, but you'll you'll see who it is and you'll see where I'm coming from. Okay. 
I need to talk to you about something that's really serious and really sad. And uh, if you know me, it's hard to talk about sad stuff without getting emotional, but this is really important to talk about. On February 12th, an openly gay 15-year-old boy named Larry, who was an 8th grader in Oxnard, California, was murdered by a fellow 8th grader named Brandon. Larry was killed because he was gay. Days before he was murdered, Larry asked his killer to be his valentine. I don't want to be political. This is not political. I'm not a political person, but this is personal to me. A boy has been killed, and a number of lives have been ruined. And somewhere along the line, the killer, Brandon, got the message that it's so threatening and so awful and so horrific that Larry would want to be his valentine, that killing Larry seemed to be the right thing to do. And she was, the message right, out we get there the idea. So she was more upset about the dog she gave away. She actually <laughs> cried. And she couldn't get through that statement without crying. Right. Well, you're just as vicious to Artie as he is to you. It's escalating into this very vicious battle. Do you guys want to have closure? Here we are, April Fool's Day. Uh, I've done the Ralph joke, uh, whatever. Uh, maybe in the spirit of this, maybe there can be some closure, right, George? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, I'm willing, not because I'm it's willing, April Fool's. It's got to be genuine. Yeah, genuine. I'm willing to never speak to or about Artie. Great. If, if I can get that same uh, closure. Oh, God, yeah. Good, good. Now, let me understand this, Artie. You're agreeing not to speak about... <laughs> <laughs> and even when he's in here, not to address him. Well, once again, and you know what? you got to wipe that smirk off your face. I'm sorry, George. <laughs> <laughs> because there's saying... no credibility in your words when you have that expression on your so face. So great. George is like uh, your mom when she yells yeah, at you. Yeah, get that smirk <laughs> off your face. Now... See that street. <laughs> Artie, what is the you're going to go for this deal? Yeah, I don't care. What do you mean? Good. good. What what is it again? Not to talk to him? No, no. Well, not to say bad and, things and, about and, him. And if you want to hype it up, you know, for the fans, I know you like big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he keeps nobody calling, cares he keeps about you. Me gay, so if you want, I'll take an HIV test on the air. He can take a drug test on the air. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll make it a little bit. Well, you, let, let's clear so this you're up. Prove you, know, you don't have AIDS. Are you are you gay at all? No, and uh, <laughs> and he's going to preach, you know. To the high waters that I am, but no, no, no. Like, like, you know, and, and I know what you mean by Artie saying you're gay all the time. Like uh, someone told me they ran into you coming out of the movies with a guy the other day. <laughs> what? Like, so what's the matter with that? No, nothing is <laughs> the matter. Exactly, with that. exactly. Right. You have a smirk on your face. No, I don't. I, no, I, I, you what were they little, holding? No, hands? no, 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 no. All he right. came out of the movie, yeah. stop loss with a man. The, and the other half the story. A, the other half the story is I run into Richard and his girlfriend. We talked to me and my friend talked to Richard's girlfriend. Why Richard's off sucking the cock of some band we've never heard of right. at a club. Well, my point being is that because <laughs> Artie keeps calling you gay, as soon as someone sees you with a man, they go. They yeah, they call, they call the Howard 100 News tip line. I mean, that's right. how this shit yeah. happens. Right, right away there was a call to the tip line saying, uh, "Hey, guess who we saw walking out of the theater with a man." Right. So, you know, look, you did a vicious song about Artie. Let me let me replay that, if I oh, may. Oh, please do. Oh, uh, I hadn't heard that. Oh, yes. Listen, it goes both ways. These guys are really going at each other. Uh, I believe this is the song. Rock a bed, so on the stern show. That hurts fat people. <laughs> You're addicted to drugs and your comedy blows. That hurts drug addicts and comedians. Oh, hitting him where he hurts. Such a fat people. Now that's cool. Yeah, the guy cool. lost his father to wow. a terrible accident. That was bad. No, I'm going to so take the, the high road today. I'm gonna, one thing I must I'm say. I'm going to take the high road today. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mike, you're a wonderful soprano. <laughs> Thank you, George. Yeah, he does have a good voice. I'm going to take the high road today. You're going to take the Hershey Highway today. All right. So uh, the point maybe, is, I, maybe I shouldn't apologize. I'll just shut up. Oh, uh, Wait a minute, Quinn. I thought we were having a... Yeah, we're, we're getting oh, close, we're getting close. We're getting close. Uh, Artie hears the song and it reminds him of that. <laughs> See what I mean, Mike? It goes both ways. So when I try to broker the piece here, much like uh, uh, the Middle East... It goes, <laughs> it, it goes both ways, but you have to admit, even yourself, Howard, the, the rant that has started all this discussion with George and the PSA, there was no humor in it at all. All right. So, I don't know about that. So anyway, <laughs> let's agree now. If we can, Artie, if you tell me no, or right. Mike, well, we, you, tell you know me what? No. We've done this before, though. This we did a truce months ago, and I uh, see. the truce was broken. Who broke the truce? I think it was Artie. Yeah, I think it? I broke it. It might have been Artie. It might have been me. I, I can't even remember. Can't it might have been Mike. Yeah, might have been Mike. Might have been. You Mike. don't even remember. Could have been me. 
It could have been you. Yeah. Well, as I understand it, it was triggered by you calling him fag. Oh, no, See, no, no. There this again, is... that word. Right, that word is you know, and so it, appropriate. And the thing is, it's not even just Artie. There's people on the rap. A lot of people, people hate people, you. There's people in your staff, Howard, that have said the F word is not nearly offensive as the N word, as if there's some sort of ranking between black people and gay people, you know. Well, all right. So is there any peace to be had here today? Artie or Mike? I think you have a good cause, Mike, but you have an insane lack of intelligence. And Not you can't bring that. it across. Artie. No, I'm serious. I think you if you found like that. a smarter, more articulate person with a normal voice and less redness on their face from... Well, God I think if what. you could come in four days a week for four hours a day and not shoot up drugs on a Sunday night, you know, you we're coming to work. You know, first imperfect. of all, I snort drugs on a Sunday night. All right, we, we all have our faults. <laughs> you know, let's recognize that. But right. then we have good things. Robin, I don't know. I I don't know I don't what think to say. It's going to work. All right, it doesn't know seem to work. Mike, I was trying to get this to stop. You know, I hate to see this going on in our little group. Yeah. We Is there a way in Paul to come to mediate this? Arthur <laughs> seems to be the guy who's always at war with somebody. Yeah, he and he loves Remember to... Sal and Richard for a while? You were I mean, he just attacked Scott Salem because Scott had an opinion. Well, Scott yeah. came in here and attacked me. That's true. With a very valid argument. You're bitching and whining because you have to go do stand-up comedy where you make more than most people make in a year. <laughs> and it's a fucking problem for you. <laughs> All right. Well, I can look see at your shirt. Erase hate. Can we do that? All right. Can we erase the hate? Then? Meanwhile, while Artie's being dropped from charities, I decided to join the charity. This is the shirt of the Matthew Shepard Foundation. What are you oh, going to raise? Nice. So, if you want to make a joke about somebody getting what, their head, what are you going to raise? You. What kind of money are you going to raise for that? There's other ways to help a charity other than just giving money. What are you going to do? Bring notice to their cause. Uh. All right. Well, fair enough. All oh, right. that's very noble. Yeah, that's very noble. <laughs> okay. Look, Mike. George, I, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. George, I hope you would seriously reconsider the PSA, too. Oh, yeah. No, You've I, done a lot of good work with the HRC, and this would ruin your you, credibility. Uh, George, what is your decision on the Well, PSA? you know, I, if Artie can really genuinely, honestly, you know, say that he he's going to do it uh, Sincerely, then be all right. it's worth it. But okay. I don't. I don't think he should do it if he's going to, you know, maintain this posture here right now. What well, posture? Well, I mean, you, you, you know, you, the, the use of the word, the and, and your. Uh, I'm not, I haven't you, said you the word once. Funny? I haven't said the word once just now. You think I'm it's calling funny? him a bozo. You, you think the word is funny? It's hilarious when it's used properly. Unders you don't understand. And all well, the hands hands the N word is funny. <laughs> is the N word funny? No, yeah, it, it can be, absolutely. No, it is not. Well, it can be. It's Words have power. Yeah. They have tremendous, or symbols, you know, like... I have a lot a of... Artie, why don't you be honest? Do you want to do the PSA no. or not? Okay, so never, no. Okay. He never no. wanted to do the Unless PSA. there's sincerity, it's me. All right, so the no PSA is it. over, Mike. You uh, get your Why wish. doesn't he just... Why don't you... I mean, give him something he can do. He can give your your favorite charity some money every yeah, time he that? says the F word. Well, no, what know, about that? I'll that, do that. That's what he's uh, said the old Jew. But it's, yes, but it was tied money. to this PS. Well, what's different than that within a life feed? It's still it's money from All the right. hypocrite. Well, listen, I don't know how to resolve this. <laughs> I really don't, and I almost don't. Robin care. took my money from me. All right, you know, if you can Artie, give me all the money. I pitch Mike. If Artie can can uh, really get himself into that state where he when he came out to me. As a gay man, uh, I mean that was so that believable. State, that was so <laughs> credible. Well, that was and, comedy, and, and I saw the pain. Yeah, I saw the anguish. I have I, a lot of. Pain. I saw he's an actor. Torture. He's an actor. He's a wonderful actor. He is. He is. He's terrific. And if you can act, he could actually honestly, act. I mean, method acting is acting finding gang. something in you that you know that uh, that is the character. Right, right and you're listen. saying please find something in you that can make you do a credible PSA. Yes, Mike. Right. Do you have any I more daytime talk shows you want to play before you? Well, uh, Mike, uh, thank you for playing. Well, you know what? Uh, her talk show is more successful than any fucking project you've ever done. I'm where, on the Howard Stern show. I'm on the Howard Stern show. This is his show, not yours. Well, you I mean, want to I... make it yours, but it's not yeah. yours. It's his. <laughs> okay, come on, all right. <laughs> you know this. They can't have. All one right. civil word between Mike, them. you've said a lot. Artie, you've said a lot. Right. I don't think detente is uh, going to happen today. 
but I'm hoping. I don't for think it. you even made a step in the right direction. No, I was almost there, and then I played this, this, this song. Like, yeah. this, is like, this is like when Robin intervened in the Richard Salinardi fight, and she only fucked it up even more. That's why you love her. You gotta love that. Well, At I least was effort is for being made. Not detente, uh, uh, not detente, but gaytante. <laughs> All right, thank you, High Pitch Mike. Let's hope that in the future, if more uh, more uh, dialogue can happen. But what does he do? But why? What does he do for the show? Well, he I hope works we, in the news he works department. in the newsroom. Oh, I didn't and know I hope we establish Mike is not gay. Well, was, all right, that's fine. he isn't. He is. Go to the he movies with all the guys you want. Well, you go to movies too, with, I and some of them happen to be guys, right? Never. Absolutely. Your friends. <laughs> well, coming up, everyone should be very happy. We have the newly weird game. Yes. Well, this is exciting. What a great day. I've been looking forward to the newly weird game for a very, very long time. Brought to you by our sponsor, HotMovies.com. Yes, love is in the air. And I love love. And, of course, I love being a game show host. My biggest aspiration in life was that I would become a game show host one day, but it didn't work out. And instead, I resorted to penis jokes. Well, anyway, uh, here we are at the Newly Weird Game. This is exciting. And uh, let me announce the couples who are going to be playing today. I am very excited to have Blue Iris and Ron. Hi, Blue. Hi. Hi. It's good to see you. I miss you. You know what, Blue? I didn't even know you were married. I'll be honest with that. <laughs> are you married or your boyfriend and girlfriend? No, we're, we're, we're separated legally since 1999, but we live together. <laughs> you still live together. Yeah. Ron, Ron, welcome to the show. Thanks a million. And, and Ron. Ron, Blue Iris has been a staple on our show for a long time. I know that. And uh, and how did you guys meet? Where did you meet? How, how did your love affair begin? I met him in the doctor's office. Is that true? When I was 17. Somebody told me that they asked you, how did you guys meet? And Ron said, if you want the truth, I'll tell you. And you freaked out, Blue Iris. You didn't want it known how you met. Okay. Why don't I'll you tell come how you met. Tell. Okay. And now that I know that John Barris doesn't have a TV radio show here, I'll tell you. <laughs> no. By the way, how is your bladder? Are you able to move your uh, urine? Yeah, I'm okay. You are. Remember when your urine was going into your feet? Oh, it was gross. Yeah, I imagine so. That was hilarious. Clear that up. You stopped peeing, is that correct? Yeah. And when you stopped peeing, the urine collected in your feet. Yeah. Now, George, I don't know why you're laughing at that. Isn't that it's a terrible affliction. How would you feel if your urine... Was... Well, it sounds bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. But, of course, that's typical, isn't it? Yes. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Blue, it wasn't funny at the time, right? No, it wasn't. Funny at the time. It's hilarious now. Yeah. How did it happen? Funny now. I don't know. I just woke up that way. Well, Ron, why does she not want people to know how the two of you met? Tell them. I, I, I think you better ask her. Uh, tell me, <laughs> how did you meet? And why don't you want oh, anyone to know? We, 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 we did meet at a doctor's office. That's, that's true and correct. That part is true. That's but true what kind correct. of doctor was it? A gynecologist. <laughs> why were, Ron, why were you at the gynecologist? I wasn't there for me. <laughs> I don't understand what's going I on. I had a baby out of wedlock, and he adopted the baby. Oh. And then I came to find him because I was bipolar when he turned 18. I I came looking, and he had been divorced, and I'd been divorced. Right, let me understand this, but what I think you're what saying is... What a love is, story. This is some love story. You had a baby out of wedlock. Right. You lost the baby because of your bipolar disease. The court must have said, we cannot let you raise the baby. No, they never said anything no. of the kind. She was a young girl. You were a young girl. You put girl, the baby up for adoption, would... and Ron adopted the baby. Yeah. I Ron, had were you Israeli... married at the time? Of course. You were. <laughs> yes. yes. I had an Israeli boyfriend who was killed on a motorcycle and left me five months pregnant when I was 15. Right. So... I mean, Very complicated, but yeah. he adopted the baby with his wife, and then right. I guess you and your wife got divorced, Ron? That's correct. And then you reunited with Blue Iris? How so? I mean, she said, I need to see this uh, baby of mine? Well, I always felt that I'd adopt Blue Iris. 
Right. Did yeah. we, were you always in touch with each other? No. 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 But I wanted to see, I wanted, because I'm bipolar, I wanted to make sure when David turned 18, the records would be unsealed. I see. And then I used my tarot cards, and I found out where they lived. You You're... used your tarot cards? Yeah. All right, so... Is that a phone book? Blue and Ron, how long were you married for? So I understand when I try to figure out who's going to win this game. We've been married for 25 years. 25 years. Long years, Ron? Mm. The years go by as quickly as a wink. They do. And, Ron, was it unusual to marry Blue Iris? I mean, uh, what attracted you to Blue Iris? Everything. All I had to do was touch her. Right. Were you upset when she went into porn? I mean, after all, you're married to her. She Nothing a... that she does surprises me or upsets me. Have you seen her porn? Of course. You have? Of course. It's called old age porn. In other words, it's older women having sex with young men. It's Blue Iris porn. There is nobody like Blue Iris. She's the only one on this earth. Why did you stop having sex with her? Why did you stop being married to her? Who said we stopped having sex? Oh, you are having sex. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Gave us a clip of his porn. If you want, I could show it to He's you. He's got porn? Are you in porn, Ron? Is that correct? Well, I did a film. You did? <laughs> With an older woman or a young woman? There was a younger. A younger woman. 21 years old. You know, this is great. She was 18. Uh, wow. Oh, I'm trying to stay thin. This is great. I'm going to throw up right now. So that's, <laughs> everything you ate is going to come back up on Yeah, this is perfect. Could you guys tell me more stories after lunch every day? <laughs> yeah. It'll be our pleasure. That is a gastric bite. All right, so Blue Iris and Ron, you've been together a long time. Do you think you know each other well? Do you know your... Your sort of uh, idiosyncrasies. N nobody can really know Blue Iris. I see. All I do is try to try to take care of the Iris field and uh, try to service her. And um, you're meet, a good man. Meet all her, all her objectives. I'm I'm there. You know, I'm like I'm like the police. I'm there to protect and serve. Okay, and fair enough. Also obey. All right. So it is a legitimate relationship of a long time, and the two of you have lived together for a long time. You certainly should know each other very well. My money is on George Tate and Brad, but we'll see. We'll see how okay. Blue Iris and Ron Blue do. Blue Iris and Ron can you, You're us. trying to tell me that the fix isn't in. <laughs> I mean, the don't the people in. around here, when you pay them off, don't they stay paid off? No. This is integrity here. No, I have the questions. George and Brad, have you seen the questions? No, Has anybody seen the questions ahead of time? Okay. Let's well, Howard, you know, I would bet on Evil Dave, but um, how much can you really learn in one day after a kidnapping? <laughs> <laughs> We're going, to get to, we're going to get to Evil Dave in a minute. But first, I'm going to go to George Takei and Brad. You two have been together for quite some time. George, of course, we know you well. And Brad, we feel like we know you through George, quite frankly. Uh, were you shocked yesterday? Did you listen to the show oh, yesterday? no. Yes, I did. You oh, did. Oh. Brad, uh, you're such a, uh, an upstanding guy, handsome man, uh, certainly a, a, a pillar of the community, I would call you. Mm -hmm. uh, George came out with some shocking revelations yesterday. Did you... Were you were aware of all of this masturbating in the shower? No, in fact, he said that I keep him on a short leash, and actually, I'm going to have to make the leash shorter now. <laughs> Brad, I have to be honest with you. I was a little shocked. I was, too. That you don't allow George the freedom to masturbate in the library. How do you feel about the porn? I mean, what yeah. do you think? What's Is going that on? cheating to you? I don't know. I think masturbation is private, so... I never really worried about it until yesterday. <laughs> well, George, George, I can't open a tale of two cities. <laughs> George, I, did, I, you know, I describe what you say because it's fascinating to me. I mean, here you are, a grown man. You certainly have a, a distinguished career. And for Brad to walk into the room when you were trying to masturbate and say, George, no, 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 you can't. It's almost as if he's mothering you. And I, in fact, Brad, I said, you're more of the woman in the relationship. It's always the woman saying, no, don't masturbate. It's not really like that. I just don't deal with it. Right. I mean, it's something I don't even think about. What was, the, what was it like for you the first time you walked into the library and saw George there with his pants uh, pulled down? And <laughs> Not what, pulled down. Well, well his, penis, zipper his, his zipper out. And his penis out. <laughs> Touching himself to the computer. Did you feel betrayed? Honestly. No, I, I just, it, I, I blacked out. I didn't. I don't even remember the situation. He happening. did not black out. What did he do? <laughs> what did he do, George? He start. You know, 
I think I know Brad, 99%. But uh, every so often I discover that I only know him 50%. There's a whole new aspect of uh, Brad that, that's revealed. Well, the, His voice goes up. And, you know, I can't deal with, <laughs> deal with this hysteria. So, but uh, yet you, know. you stopped masturbating. Uh, it, you, did you, were you aware that he masturbated in the shower? N n not really, but I knew he took long showers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, what he does is he memorizes the images of I know. the porn. He goes into the shower. He lathers himself up, except for the penis area. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to sting down there. And then the, he runs the warm liquid over his penis. <laughs> uh, that, that had to be a shock to you, yes? Well... The thing is, I I must acknowledge to the world, Howard, that I also masturbate. Oh, you do? Yes. Did you know that, George? I didn't. Oh. Did. I didn't know that. You two are not two communicating. Of you having such secrets. <laughs> Why else would he have Jude well, Law movies? Because he would disapprove of my doing it. You know, yeah. I never shared mine, and I I never. But why do you Why do you disapprove of George doing it then? That's sort of a misunderstanding. I just don't go there. Because I, I, because George thinks that you don't want him masturbating. Well, he not doesn't. Not in the study, maybe. Do you think something's wrong with the relationship sexually in the sense that the two of you are off masturbating when you could be masturbating each other? No, not really, because we have a good sex life and we enjoy those moments of sexual intimacy and right. we look forward to them. But then there's other times when we don't have so, that opportunity so when you masturbate do you think of other men besides george what do you think yes <laughs> yes, yes i do yes. so do you have a stash of magazines or do you use porn hotmovies.com robin <laughs> <laughs> What a dumb question. <laughs> right. Well, isn't it interesting to learn that Brad and George don't have a level of communication where they can talk openly and honestly about their masturbation? I feel this show has really added <laughs> some depth to your you relationship. Up, yes. I really, truly do. I think this is healthy and good. All right, couples. We're going to now get to the third couple. And uh, Evil Dave, you've been on our show how many times? Oh, God. I, I can't even count. We have you on because you sound like David Letterman. Exactly. We know you can't count, but how many have been on the right. show? And you, told me, you told me you got a divorce. Is that correct? Yes, I got a divorce. All right. You got a divorce and you met a lovely woman, what, six to nine months ago? Was it you yes. said nine months ago? Nine months ago. Okay. Now, listen. I invite you in here because I like you. And I have to tell you something. There isn't a person in this room believes this woman is your girlfriend. No way. No and way. And Dave, you're a sabotage. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I appreciate yeah. that. You're a lovely, beautiful girl. What is your name? Angie. Angie. If you're going to stage... See, she's not even sure of her name. Yeah, Angie. If you're gonna... <laughs> Dave. Well, cue cards aren't up yet. Go ahead. Dave, <laughs> if you're going to stage something, yeah. at least stage somebody within yeah. your yeah. capability. Yeah, get somebody, somebody believable. Listen, you know, I, I admit it. I When we first uh, started going out, I, I consider myself very lucky and I you know, Dave, I beg like a dog, but Dave, here's the, here's <laughs> enough with the Lou Gehrig bit. I got to bust you because I, I believe in honesty. I know, I know. Blue Iris and Ron all this. Sal met your girlfriend, the woman that you're dating, and this isn't her. Let me explain that. <laughs> uh, the girl I brought was Angie, and I uh, both know her. She wanted to come and meet everybody. Angie could not get away that night. Yeah, but, so what but, we did, Dave, Dave, what? Yeah, we're doing a bit here between couples and That's talking right. about how well they know each other. You can't just bring a stranger in here. I did not bring a game. stranger. This is a stranger. <laughs> she, is, <laughs> she is not a stranger. Yeah, she, you see saying that's your girlfriend, you're going to maintain that. You better believe it. Sal, you know, why did the two of you make out right now? <laughs> first, we first started going out in July. and um, Angie, would you make out French kiss him right now? In front of everybody? Yeah, in front of everyone. Let me see that. I know it's embarrassing, but you have to go ahead and do it. Angie, come clean. This is not your boyfriend, is it? He is. Angie, then make out with him. <laughs> oh my God! For the radio audience, Angie has a look on her face. Like, of the mind, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting beheaded on Al Jazeera. <laughs> Evil Dave, listen to me. 
this is a horrible joke you're playing on me and my audience. Uh -huh. I I don't know why you would do this. I don't know what you're. It's April Fool's Day. April what? Fool's Day. No, 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 no. no we, she's legit. She's we even legit. paid you to give, gave you some money because we knew it was hard for you to get in. No. And the thing. What do you legit. know? And and Sal no, met your my girlfriend. My hand to God. Well, legit. She what? Met, Sal met your girlfriend. I know, this and I knew we'd get back to you on that. No, this is her. The other one. <laughs> the other one was a big. You're gonna Boy, is with, my face red. You're gonna no, the other with, one. You're going to stick with this story. I will stick with you're the story. You're going to continue lying to me. She won't even kiss you. She won't make out with you. She will kiss me. I, I don't want to make out. She's just, she's you don't want to make out. Can I say, can I say, I mean, this yes, is, Gary, this, go this, ahead. This is the worst thing you could oh, have done sure. to me. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Be an instigator. Go ahead, it's Gary. It's the worst thing you could have done to me. I mean, Brad is we here. We set this up. It's a Ron big Ron is contest. here with Blue Irish. Come on. Hand to God. Hand to God what? Tell me what this I is. I begged like a dog to get this girl to first go out with me. I am so lucky to have her. We believe her. Hey, that. Dave, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Dave, I'm going to put this to rest right now. You yes, Gary. You told us many times on the wrap-up show that the woman that you're dating works with you and she, then i just ask your your girlfriend what no, she works and, and she doesn't work with you i used to work with she him. used to work with me i don't know why won't you kiss him why do you look like a hostage <laughs> <laughs> would, you please put them out of mind? would you what please what <coughs> oh, my. Well, oh my god oh, oh my god wow <laughs> Everybody satisfied? No. All right, now put your, and, and I now, put your, now put your finger in his ass. Oh, come on. All right. Hello. It's a family show. <laughs> Wait a second. I want you to swear to God, the Lord Jesus Christ, that this is your girlfriend of six months. I swear to God, on only that is holy in this universe, this is my girlfriend. This is my main squeeze. She's my buddy. And how She's long has pal. she been your girlfriend? Nine months. Swear on the life of your children. I swear on the life of my children. All right. Wow. <laughs> and I'll Is it the other it. Well, no, And you sorry. are making out. Yeah. You're not lying to me. No, I'm not lying to you. David, who was the woman that Sal met? Yeah, who did I meet? That was a woman <gasps> who works with me at the, at the company. She was very interested in meeting everybody. So I said, and I got Angie's permission. I said, you want to meet them? You want to meet Sal? I said, yes, yeah, she's a big fan of the show. <laughs> and but she also wanted Angie? me to push. Let me finish, Robin. She also wanted me to push the chalk. I said, let me get let me get clearance from the tower here, and uh, she said, <laughs> "That's right. You laugh or you get it, Artie. Uh, let me get let me get clearance very, from the very, tower. Very pretty. And yes, yes. And I don't and believe you could get her." I told you, I begged like a dog when we first went out. I admit it. He treats me like a princess. Thank he does. you. Yeah. And he's right. better. That's right. Sal. Sal. That's right. And by the way, Howard, his girlfriend, when I met her, made it very clear they were boyfriend and girlfriend. She loves the show. We they were, were definitely together. And she made it clear, just like you did in the past, Dave, that she would never, he ever appear. on the life of his children was... and on the Lord Jesus Christ that this is his girlfriend. Yeah, he's also missing a few brain cells, Howard, and there's $5,000 on the line. You know, think about it. <laughs> Come on, so give me a little credit. I you love you, Dave, but I met little your girlfriend. Credit. All right, Ralph, what do you want? Please give me a little credit. Ralph, what are you still doing here? It's the quiet one, Jeff, to watch out Throw for. him out. This is ridiculous. When he just kissed her, tell that they, she was getting attacked. It looked like a giant fish sucking her face in. Oh, stop it. Oh, yes. you, you're rooting the show. Get out of here. It's about honesty. All right. Did Dave feel her up right now? No, I'm not going <laughs> to. I mean, I'm not going to. All right, thank you, guys. Listen, they made out. Robin, I guess we have to go ahead. I'm going to go contest. with this. I'm going to go ahead I with the would contest. I doubt that they'll match. Does anybody all? believe I can occasionally get lucky? For no. God's <laughs> sake, absolutely. Not. I believe Even if you. I don't have a, some dead presidents on me. Can anybody believe no. that? No. Are, are you in ecstasy, Dave? No. 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 Right. Yeah. So the two of you are. Are you in love with Dave? Oh, come on. Yeah. We're getting you are. there. You Howard, getting can there. I say something, Howard? All right. Howard, Howard. Okay. one, one, one last thing. let them play then. Yes, she looks so repulsed right now from making out with him. I ask you to make out with him one more time. I don't think you'd go through with it. She, look at her. She looks like she just, just got are raped. You, are you going to throw up from making out with him? <laughs> yeah, she did. Make out. I want to see your tongue hit his tongue and swirl them around just for five seconds. <laughs> what do we Go need? Ahead. An instant replay for Because yeah. it's bullshit. Go ahead. Do it. Well, but well, since two, since uh, you are uh, lover, what, with George and Brad, they'll, they'll do more yeah, than that. Right. They'll go right in the shower. <laughs> One last kiss to prove to everyone with the tongue. Tongue swirls. Let's go. Go ahead. And then we will Why believe. I want to see this. We need because to see it. We, because we, need, we need to see it. Go ahead. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, he licks her like a dog. Oh, well. 
Yeah. That, that would be doggy style, Robin. Right? You are a dumb operator. George yeah, and Brad, yeah. is that the worst kisser you've ever seen? Oh, my <laughs> But they God. did it. They, they, you Frighten guys me. really are, uh, they, hey, they did it. I have to hand it to them. They are. <laughs> Doug, they, they did it. They, they did it. Save the good ones for the wrap-up show. You know what All I'm right, saying? All right, good. I am convinced. Dave, thanks. Thank you, Howard. I am convinced, Dave. Now, can Angie make out with Blue Iris? Angie, I apologize. Let's see how well they know each other. All right, we'll see how well you know each other now. All right, it's time for the newly weird game. And what we're going to do is ask the uh, spouses of the famous person from the show to leave. And I will ask questions, and then we'll see if you can match. The people who match the most get a $5,000 prize for the newly weird game provided by HotMovies.com. Now, when you go to HotMovies.com, there are 90,000 adult movies, 10 cents a minute, get in, get off, get out. HotMovies.com. What a day. You've got Evil Dave and his beautiful girlfriend, stunningly beautiful girlfriend, Angie. You've got Blue Iris, who, yes, has a husband, Ron. Who would have thought? And then there is George Takei, who just learned his lover of 25 years, Brad, masturbates. Masturbate. 21 years. 21, I apologize. With, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I learned four years before. <laughs> okay. Here we go. This is so simple. I'm going to go to each of you. Don't answer out of turn. Your partners cannot hear your answers. When they come back in, you are to give them no clues to your answers. You sit there quietly. And here we go. All right, first question. Are you starting with Evil Dave? Starting with Evil Dave. Oh, God. <laughs> Dave. Yes. When you orgasm, yeah. where does the sperm go? <laughs> where does the sperm go? How do you answer that? See, your lover certainly should know the answer to that. She's a clean freak, so I would say um, not, not in the throat. <laughs> no, but where does it go? Uh, let's see. Where does it go, Miss Oh, my God. Can you be more specific? Yeah. <laughs> not in the throat, but where does it go? We can eliminate the throat. That's yeah. fun. All right. Uh, probably, uh, you know, probably... Um, I, know, I wear glasses, so I'd say off to the side. To off to the side of yeah. what? Her face? Are you no, saying? no, no. Just off to the side of the bed. Side. Yeah. Does it land on the bed? So is it on the bed? Yeah, probably. And then on I can't the tell for messing up the sheets. Okay, on the bed. Wait and a minute. Sheets. Wait a minute. Why is he guessing? Do you? I'm you've not. never made love no, no. to this woman? Of course I have. But he shoots onto the bed. It usually hits the midget. Not in the throat. <laughs> All right, he's got it, yeah. Uh, George, certainly this should be an easy question and answer session for you. 21 years. Where does the sperm go? It goes in his mouth, and then he rushes to the bathroom, and he spits it out in the basin and gargles, and then he um, takes Listerine. And comes back with a very fresh mouth. Are you insulted wow. by that? If I may ask. No, no. Because most women will swallow. He does not swallow. But, uh, doesn't that kind of bum you out? Isn't it like a sort of a sign of love when the person swallows? Well, I mean, he runs you know, out of the room. It's a little selfish, but I've gotten my You've rocks got, off. Right. I mean, he runs out of the room. It's very insulting. Uh, well, you and know, he rinses I, you out, so right. to speak. Well, and then you know, there, it's. I do the same for him, oh. and then we cuddle, and it's a cuddle. So you don't you swallow, don't swallow either. either. Okay. I don't All swallow right. either. All right, Blue Iris, when you make love to Ron, yeah. where does the sperm go? In my mouth. In your mouth. Okay, fair enough. In my feet. <laughs> okay, now that's does, the first does question. Blue Iris swallow that? And April 8th, I'll be at the Improv in Hollywood, <laughs> California, with my tornadoes of comedy. Now, the blue, so you're saying you swallow the sperm? Yeah. Okay, all right, very good. Okay. All right, I'm going to start with George this time. All right. All right, to make it fair. George, what is your partner's favorite sexual position? Well, uh, when I do it to him? That's, what is your partner's favorite sexual His position? His favorite sexual position is um, he's lying in the bed. Yes. And I suck him off. Yes. <laughs> and then I, 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 while I'm uh, off in the bathroom, he 
feels he's feeling himself up, and then I come back and I just throw my body over him. So you're saying uh, the favorite sexual position is when you're sucking him off is the favorite sexual position what, on your knees? Or Any more details, George? Robin, 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 what is the position? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to write that down. I, I don't He's know. Lying in, the, in bed. So he likes with to his be legs, like, you know, hanging over. I see. And then I do. So you like he likes to be flat on his back. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fair enough. And it's the same for me too. Yeah. You like the same. Okay. I know the position Brad's father's in right now, which is leaping off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, don't make that comment. Let's go to no, Brad's father passed away recently. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Try to yeah. be sensitive, Artie. Yeah. Already, I already you loud. I'm very sorry. Let's go to no, Blue yeah. Iris. Uh, what is uh, your partner's favorite sexual position? What will he say? Uh, all fours. He likes you in the doggy position? or yes. he, likes to be, he, he likes the doggy position. Doggy style. Oh, yes. the doggy style. Uh, Dave, your, your beautiful partner, Angie, who none of us believe is your partner, but yet you've proven it. Uh, what is... Her favorite sexual position. I will say missionary. Missionary, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Missionary impossible. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh where you get it, right, Artie Harris? All right, Blue, here is a question that is non sexual. <laughs> okay. If you could change one thing about your partner, Ron, what would it be? Everything. Everybody. <laughs> what are you if saying? If I only have one thing, I'd make it everything. I give him more energy because he's a lot older than I am. All right. And I'd like him to have more energy. More energy. And good health. All right. You would change his energy level. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Evil Dave, what would you change about her? I'm very lucky to have her. I would say she gets a little bit bossy once in a great, great while. Okay. You would okay small her? price to pay. All right. You are so George, weird. It's the same as Dave's. Uh, uh, you know, bossy. he's a great guy. He's he's very thoughtful, kind, and considerate. Except that he is controlling, and he, you know, sometimes yes. when I, you know, resist. He gets his terror. Well, I mean, the fact that he goes crazy that you masturbate me while he masturbates. Yeah. So he is very controlling. That right. is true. So okay. you would change that hysteria, huh? Exactly. Okay. All right. Let's get back to Evil Day first. Mm -hmm. Name something your partner likes to be called while having sex. I will go with a nickname on that. What I like to call her? Yes. Or what your partner likes My to be called. My little extra Christmas. A little extra Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to go with victim. Yeah. All right. I'll say my little extra Christmas. George, name something your partner likes to be called while having sex. Well, what I do is, and we've been, I've been saying this all day. Oh, Bradder. 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 B R A D D E R. Bradder. <laughs> it's horrible. All right, let's go to Blue Other Iris. Things we review. Name something your partner likes to be called while having sex. Um. Um, the governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> he likes to be called Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. good one. He doesn't, he doesn't like to be called at all. He's got to be called something. You must have a pet yeah, name or something it. dirty you say to him. There must be a name there. Uh, Give it to me. Mr. Handsome. Nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? There's got to be something. Ronnie. Ronnie. Okay, Ronnie will go with. All right, that's fair enough. This is the greatest show. However, oh, <laughs> I can't it's in the lobby. Isn't All it? right, <laughs> well, and we're going to do one final question. We could probably stop at four. I, I, you know, well, you have to have like that. Extra I'll have question. a bonus question yeah. just in case this thing gets close. I doubt it will. Okay, I mean, I don't think so. Uh, to your best guess, George, the great George Takei. Star of Heroes, <laughs> Star Trek. I love the plug. That Dan, the, the new uh, show you were Secret yeah. Talent of the Star. Right. Next Tuesday, a week from today. How many sexual partners has your partner had? Hmm. I know of at least um, three. Mm -hmm. But, I, I, you know, I don't know You're going with him three? before I met him. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, what happened before I met you him. You don't, so you have no guess. You're going to go with three. I'll, I'll go with, since I've known him, yes. three. Well, mm, all right. That's a bad question. You, you got any more in, questions? All right, I'll scratch that question. Yeah. You don't like yeah, that that's question. Not, that's not a good question. Okay. Uh, what annoys you most about your partner while having sex? Annoys me. Actually, we have good sex. Okay, uh, so what annoys you most about your partner, period? 
Well, when he gets hysterical and his voice goes way up there, you know, and he starts, you know, yammering at me. All right, high voice kind of thing. Hysterical. Blue, what annoys you most? About about Ron? Yeah, have, yeah. When I'm having sex? Is that kind of, no, yeah. no, 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 no. And, and just, just in general. general. Yeah, just in general? Yes. Um, he always puts his foot in his mouth. Puts his foot in his mouth. Yeah, but he's a brilliant lawyer. Okay. And, <laughs> and Dave, do you have any? This is just a bonus question. I know. I, I doubt we'll even get to this. Dave, what uh, annoys you most? Um, I'll say I'll stand on, on an answer I gave before. She does. She is a uh, perfectionist. I'll say she's, she gets a little bossy. All, right, all my last questions are shitty. So here we right, go. Let's yeah. just go to the first I was going to say, I thought Dave would say she always calls the cops. <laughs> <laughs> well, not lately, Artie. I mean, I could have asked as a bonus question, if uh, if your partner could have sex with a famous person, who do you think your partner would choose? I can do that. That's a good one. All right, George, answer that one real quick. If, you, if your partner could have a sexual liaison with anyone famous, who do you think he would choose? Probably so, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, okay. Uh, Blue? For me? Yeah. Oh, God. Well, what would Ronnie choose? Yeah. What would Ronnie choose? Yeah, yeah, famous person. Famous person? Yeah. I haven't the slightest idea. Make up a name, then. Joanne Worley? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Angelina um, Jolie? No. Tyne Daly? Um, no. George Takei? <laughs> Who would it be? Who would it be? Quickly, give me a name. Quickly. Um, I can't give you. Can't this. give me a name. All right, oh, can't answer. Yeah. That's going to be a lost question. Oh no, I don't want it to oh, be a lost on, question. Come on, let's go. Okay, I'll say you'd like Quickly. to have sex with Britney Spears. Britney Spears, okay, oh. and I'll say Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. All right. Not you, Dave. The, uh, you're, you're right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're going to no, bring in. We're going to bring in your spouses, your lovers. And let's see how you do. If you give them any clue, I have to disqualify the question. You understand? Yes. We're playing for $5,000, thanks to our dear sponsor. And you know who that sponsor is. You all know it. Hotmovies.com. Yeah. 90,000 yeah. adult movies. 10 cents a minute. Get in, get off, get out. Hotmovies.com. Here comes the beautiful Angie, who is hooked up with Evil Dave. Somehow. We don't Somehow know he gets her. Yeah. Uh, Ron, who is hooked up with Blue Iris, is here. No. And of course. And the Brad. lovely Brad, who of course has been with George Takei 21 years of bliss. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget April 8th oh my at, God. The, at the uh, Hollywood Improv on Melrose. The Tornadoes of Comedy are going to strike, and I have a magician, and I give away funny prizes from the 99 cent store. All right, Blue. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you are bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> and let's get to our game. Couples, as you know, there can be no hints. Okay. All right. So. I'm going to begin with Evil Dave and his partner, Angie. Remember, the couples that match the most walk away with $5,000. Oh, my God. That's wow. good money. Dave, can you use $5,000? Oh, yeah. All right, so let's see what happens here. Also, we should tell Angie that if you blink three times real quick, we will get you help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll check out my glasses. Uh, George and Brad, I know you're very wealthy men, but I'm sure you could always use a $5,000. We have a good charity to give it okay, to Okay, that's very sweet. Blue Iris and Ron, I know you need the money, right? Yeah. Right. All right, so think carefully now when you answer. We're going to start with Dave and Angie. Robin, who's your money on? I got to say, it's got to be Brad and uh, George, don't right. you think? What do you say, uh, Artie? i tell you what, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna put my cash on Blue Iris. All right, and let's say uh, I, no one is going Evil Nobody's Dave and Nobody's taking Angie. Evil Dave and Angie. You never know. All right, here we free go. Country. First question, free country, right? <laughs> Here's the first question. Angie, we asked Dave. When your partner orgasms, where does the sperm go? <laughs> Brad is laughing, but it's not your turn, Brad. <laughs> okay, Angie, so you're having sex with Dave. Okay. All right, try to picture that. All right, try to imagine it. <laughs> your wildest imagination. And your partner has an orgasm. Okay. Somewhere that disgusting, gooey stuff has to go somewhere. Where does it go? In me. Inside of you is your answer. Yeah. Well, that's not a match. Dave no. said, mm. on the bed. <laughs> he says he shoots his load onto the bed. See, I, I told you they weren't him. I don't want to get you in trouble, for God's sake. Right. <laughs> why, why don't you know what goes inside of her? Huh? How do you not know what goes inside of well, her? Well, you know. Well, you know what? Angie, how could he not get that right? 
don't know. It's he's a little. Crazy. He's a little out of center. Right of center. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Right, right of I'm center. Gonna, I'm going to go to uh, George Takei and Brad. George, when your partner orgasms, this is what we asked George. Where does the sperm go? When I have an orgasm. No, when George, when George has the orgasm, where does the sperm oh, it end It goes up? in me. Where in you? I think that's a clear enough answer, Howard. Does it go? Be all truthful. you would say is truth. Be truthful. In my mouth. Well, let's hold up the uh, sign, George, and uh, sure enough, the there it is, the mouth. Oh, <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> and, of course, you run into the bathroom and spit it out. And then oh, the gargle. We got the whole detail. Brad, congratulations. I'd spit it out, too. <laughs> Thank you for that. Brad, that is uh, a point on the board for our couple. You Brad, you and I have a lot in common. I would do the same thing. <laughs> uh, why not just swallow the whole thing? I don't know. Didn't somebody say once that you shouldn't swallow? Really? I heard that. The semen might. We might have said that. It. Yeah. Do what? I don't know. I thought Bounce it's not back. Clean. <laughs> Bounce back. <laughs> you heard That's it might what not makes be babies. Clean. Yeah. Uh, George uh, says he doesn't care that you go and spit it out. I thought maybe you would swallow it to show your love of uh, George. <laughs> I'll start doing that. <laughs> uh, don't, don't do us any favors. <laughs> I totally understand your point of view, believe me. I understand it. All right. Blue Iris and Ron. Ron, we said to Blue, when your partner orgasms, where does the sperm go? Ron, you certainly must know where it goes. Where does it go? In her. Where? <laughs> mouth. In her mouth. Blue, and hold Blue up the said... sign. And Blue, what did you say? You said mouth. <laughs> All right. We've got a tie game now. Blue Two Iris and Ron. couples are on the board. All right, Evil Dave and Angie, you're going to have to do better. The second question, let's start with George and Brad this time. A lot of blowjobs going on. <laughs> Nobody's blowing me. All right, we said to George, Brad, mm -hmm. what's your partner's favorite sexual position? What did he say? This is about you. What's your favorite sexual position? Do I get multiple choice? No. Nope. Nope. No, you don't. Just describe what your favorite is. What do you like the best? Brad's favorite sexual position. That's yeah. right. Not George's. That's right. Um, how do I describe that? <laughs> he can't help you. Carefully. I guess lying next to George in bed. Go ahead. No, no. He can't well, answer. He, can, he can't answer. He can't answer. Lying well, next to you, George. When answer? you're lying, how? On your stomach? Or oh, on, your... on my side. On your side, uh -huh. lying on your side next to George. Well, let, let's take a look at what he said. He said you would say on his back, so we can't make it a match. But no, George is on his back. Yeah, but you I'm are on my side. But you like well, being you on your side. Well, you got to match. Uh, it, you got to match the game. So I don't know. what you do is sometimes on Isn't your side, on, sometimes on your back. No. Well, let's go to Blue Iris and Ron. Ron, what did uh, Blue say? What's your partner's favorite sexual position? What do you like best when you're with the lovely Blue Iris? All fours. All fours, All doggy four. style. All right, that's fair <laughs> enough. Let's see what uh, the match is. Doggy style. That's my team. Wow, oh, Blue geez. Iris and Ron moving they ahead with two points. Yeah. I didn't right. know anybody could match with Blue Iris. <laughs> Angie, would have said the same thing to Evil Dave. If, uh, you know. If you had to choose a position. What's the fave? I like missionary. Missionary position. Let's hold up that sign. It's missionary. missionary. You're on the board. And, and, and Usually I do something right. You sure do. Thank you. Right okay. in center. <laughs> Next question, we go to Blue and Ron first. If you could change one thing about your partner, what would it be? So we said to Blue. You can change anything you want about Ron. What, what would it be? Choose? What did she choose? She wanted to change. I mean, you seem perfect to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, you but, got it. But what what would she change about you? What should she change about me? Mm -hmm. What's the one little thing? One little thing. One little thing. Come on, we're running out of time. I'm going to have to give a no answer. Just come up with something quickly. I don't want to see you guys miss a point. All right. Well, argue. Oh, you argue too much. Well, no, I don't think that's a match. Yeah, Blue, Blue, what did you say? Hold up the sign. No. You said more energy. She finds that you're older than her and you lack energy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that true? 
True, true. Blue, well, he didn't get the match. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry All right, about but you're that. still in the lead. Uh, let's go to Evil Dave and Angie, who appear to be the mismatch of the century for some reason, <laughs> us, but they've proven they are really lovers. All right. Uh, if you, uh, we said to Dave, if you could change one thing about Angie, what would it be? Uh, he always said I'm too bossy. Too bossy. Let's take a look. Dave, what did you have? Too bossy. Wow. Yeah. 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 Them coming you know on. what? That's a real couple. I mean, I think so. Look at them coming on. Brad, what did George say? Uh, I could, that's too much. What? Kvetch. Kvetch too much. You, 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 when you say kvetch, you mean you... What is it? Complain. You complain too much. Yeah. All right, George. Hold up the sign. You are too controlling. Now, oh. the judges, is that? Well, that's uh, part of know. kvetching. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not a match. Uh, it's, it's, it's too broad a, a category. I'm going to have sorry, to take it away. George. I'm sorry. It's not a point. Oh, dear. All right. Well, we're going to get to our final question. Semantics. And the only reason this is the final question is because we are definitely not going to have a tie. I don't think. We're going to see. We might. What's the score? Well, actually, we might. Evil Dave and Angie have two, and Blue Iris and Ron have two yeah. in a stunning upset yeah. so far. <laughs> George and Brad are behind with wow. only one point. How could that be? Shocking. <laughs> Convention is... You hear the bell go to geography. It's not controlling. It's complaining. Well, uh, right. it's controlling is a different so it's thing. It's a way of... I, I'm sorry, George. Yeah, but you didn't say the thing. Yeah. Yes, the judges agree with your call. Yes, the judge is older. <laughs> it's a bold director in the back there. All right, here we go. What's your favorite salad dressing? All right, here it is. <laughs> Those are the same judges. They ought to have their head examined. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I forget who I left off with first. All right, we go to bread. All right. We'll this, this, oh, we go to blue. Okay, blue. This is it. This is for the okay. whole bowl of wax. This is for five thousand dollars. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> we said to blue, name something your partner likes to be called while having sex. So, Ron, what do you like to be called during What's sex? What's your nickname? favorite little nickname, or when you're in the intimate throes of sex? What do you like to hear her say? All right. Oh, you. Oh, you, Ron. <laughs> oh, you, Ron. Oh, you, Ron. Right. Oh, you, Ron. No. Well, you were so close. close. Ronnie. Said Ronnie. Oh, you, Ronnie. Oh. See, Ronnie. Well. <laughs> it's close, but you see, she, we no wanted cigar. a name. Yeah, no cigar. We can't give you that match. But it's all right. You could still pull this out. You've got two points on the board. Uh, Evil Dave and Angela. Angie. Name something your partner likes to be called while having sex. So what do you like Dave to call you? Let's think here. Well, he always says, my little extra Christmas. <laughs> my little extra Christmas. This is crazy. This is crazy oh, wow. because this is that's an exact crazy. post. My, wow. No. My little I extra. I don't believe this for a second. I mean, they're, what, they're... What, do, what do you think? They're psychic? I think they somehow got the question. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you I'm the only one who has Next week we have Jim Florentine up here. Go ahead. Yeah. Is this an April Fool's? This is an April Fool's. No, it this is, is not it April is. Fool's. This is, no this is going way. to... In fact, they've already won, but just for yeah. the hell of it, Brad, what do you think? He calls me Bradder. Bradder, that's right. Whoa. And it's a match, that's and you ended match. up coming up with two, but the winners are Evil Dave and Angie. Oh, my goodness. The people oh, that... And who have been together the least, <laughs> and we're not even sure we're together. Yeah. But yet, people we don't take each other for granted. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe you're right. Maybe it's that new love where I people yeah. love each other. I maybe guess. that's the problem. I don't know what we've learned here today, but I want to thank Blue Iris and Ron. I want to thank. Uh, we do it in rhyme desert ways. Yeah. I just chose one. Well, he, he, you know, he does it on the side too. This is a shocking outcome. I said I <laughs> the, the questions were terrible. <laughs> thank you, Robin. <laughs> the questions were tough. I, I, I'm sorry, George and Brad. You must break. Up. <laughs> really, you don't belong. Dark. You don't belong with each other. You know, and oh, no. and evil Dave and Angie for doubting you. I apologize. Yeah. The two of you are obviously in sync and very much in love. He oh. doesn't know where the sperm 
goes. <laughs> well, it's only been nine months, for God's sakes. I think what we've learned here is that when you're when you're chained to somebody's uh, radiator in their basement, you learn a lot about them. <laughs> Blue and Ron, I thought after all these years of knowing one yeah, another, yeah. you guys were close. You really were. You were kind of close. It, it, it just it didn't work for some. We reason. just missed one. Yes. No, we missed no you missed two. two. You guys missed two. What was the other two? Oh, the second one. Kvetching and controlling. Kvetching. Well, yeah, yeah that's that semantics. <laughs> George is still fighting You're for still that. fighting with the judges. <laughs> Good luck. You can take that up during the commercial. Bill, you were mentioning a uh, club date that you'll be doing. I want yes. to get to everybody's plugs. And, uh, of course, uh, that's uh, most important to you. Blue. Did you get that release? What release is that? The I gave Will the release that the improv gave us a full oh, page. I see. It says, see Blue Iris with the Tornadoes of Comedy, right. April 8th at the Hollywood Improv. And you can go to improv.com. That's very important. Ron, pleasure meeting you. I didn't even know Blue uh, was still having uh, a man in her life. I really didn't know. It's been my pleasure. Right. And uh, do you ever wake up some mornings and think Blue is just lying there dead? I mean, do you ever? <laughs> Sometimes she can look a little corpse-like, right? No. Never. No, never. <laughs> yeah, my heart beats true blue. And he knows she's still there. When she coughs like that, do you get nervous? <laughs> <laughs> well, that hope... sounds like remnants of a blowjob in 1948. <laughs> and uh, let me just say to uh, Brad and George, I don't know that... Uh, you have any plugs but the two of you are a lovely couple i hope that uh, you have many years of happiness and try to get to know each other <laughs> yeah. I, i'm going to share the shower with george from now on <laughs> but the happiness is over <laughs> and well, george has a new show coming on on uh, that's true we should week. mention that george will be secret talent of the stars that's going to air at 10 o'clock at night right after dancing what? with the stars right after dancing with the stars a good time slot so that should be interesting what's your talent cbs uh, I'm singing country. Oh, <laughs> where CBS? In the shower, I do it <laughs> every morning. ABC day. Oh, uh, CBS yeah. constantly bombing sitcoms. Go ahead. Wow, <laughs> this guy. Uh, look at you. You're just like the real Dave Letterman. That's Thank you very why, much. That's Howard. why Angie loves him. That's why Angie. Loves him. <laughs> Angie, what do you love Angie, most? About, I do something. Right? What do you love most about the big galoot? What do you love about his heart? His heart. He's got a good heart. He, he does. does. One thing I, I had a check does. too. Right. <laughs> right well, center. The Five thousand dollars are yours, thanks to uh, hotmovies.com, and you Thank can go you, on God. there and uh, get off in uh, minutes, ten cents a minute. You know how it works. Artie, I just want to say we got to see you when you come to Chicago, June sixth. Oh my pleasure, absolutely. I will prove to Mr. Sal beyond the doubt this is this is numero uno. All right, very good. Numero uno. Numero only. Thank you. Well, it sounds Thank like you. wedding bells might be in the future, isn't that uh, right, Angie? Yeah, that's smitten, huh, Dave? Yeah, that's smitten. Nine months. She is, I, she is a, a godsend for me. She really is. A little soon for marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yes. you, what's the age difference on these two? Yeah, what, what is the age difference on you two? I'm 49 and she's 28. All right, well. Uh, kind of a Bob Levy thing. Go good ahead. Good for you, man. Good <laughs> for you. Yes, yes, it's indeed. a man's world. I... Honest to God, I thank my lucky stars for every day. I really do. You should. I do. Yeah. She is, she's the greatest. She really You're is. not kidding. Yeah, she sure yeah. is. Uh, yeah, see, you're all broken up about that divorce now. Yeah, you? now. Oh, no. <laughs> have, uh, have you met Angie's family? family? Have you met Angie's family? I've met, I've met her mom, Janine. She's very nice. Her, her mom uh, got in a car and ran away, right? <laughs> <laughs> we had to siphon the gas out. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. All yeah, right, good enough. And was nice. her mom able to eventually what, what fit her head in the blender? I'm going to take a glass away from her, but she's, she was fine after that. We were talking to... We were talking to Evil Dave on the wrap-up show when he was in a couple of months ago. And we were asking about his girlfriend, and he said that he has to wait till his kids go to sleep and then sneak out of the house in order to go meet his girlfriend. Is that yeah, right? what's yeah. that all about? Well, rules still apply. Rules still apply. Still apply. Can you ever answer a question? <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? The rules still apply. You don't know what that means. But do you know why you have to sneak? <laughs> it's just you know. Because they have their they have their friends over and stuff like that, and I want to give them their privacy too. What? <laughs> what? I don't think that sounds so dumb. All right, I'll probably hear about it in the wrap up. Uh, Gary's say, working at it right now. Are you saying speak. that uh, you don't want to show your I'm children saying, having sex no, out I'm, of wedlock? I mean, out of no, well, I'm just saying that they have their friends over, right? And it's like. Mine. No, I don't know. Well, it's, it's a small house. Right, so their friends are over. Yeah. But why do you have to sneak out? Why can't you say, I'm hey, going everybody, out. I'm going out? I'll make a note of it. No, no, I'm asking a question. No, I just, I do, I just, I tell him now I go out. But you said you used to sneak out. I used to. But why? <laughs>
<laughs> Angie, do you know what you're talking about? Jeff, what do you expect? You're Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Angie, what's he talking about? I don't know. You <laughs> Angie, well, you know, probably because when you have kids, when you have kids, off goes the lingerie, out come the t-shirts, you. and you sneak out after their sleep. I see. Thank you. Try to conceal the Very relationship good. until you're sure that this is the real thing. Some more parenting advice. Right. Right. Not the relationship, but just the leaving and coming back. You know. I have no idea what okay. anyone is talking about. <laughs> yeah, nobody so, has to know where so he's going. What time do you? generally sneak out. Huh? I, yeah, there he goes saying ah again. Uh, I go at about I go at about uh, eleven and twelve. <laughs> of course, if I'm out for the evening earlier, that's fine. The biggest surprise is that you have a small house. <laughs> All right, listen, you two make a lovely couple. You right. make a lovely couple, and I'm, I'm well. She makes a lovely couple. Couple, what will let you decide? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then oh. we're making out again. Yes. Oh. On myself. On myself. Go ahead. All right. Well, you two are very. very ah. Thank you, Howard. All right. And uh, to all our newly weird couples, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thanks, and you can also see me on Escape.TV, Gary Garber Station. I have my own show called... Twisted View. Called the Twisted View with Blue thank Iris. All right. Well, you do have energy. I'll give you that. You're an extra you little be Christmas. Wed. Yeah. We'll be wed when Arnold Schwarzenegger approves. <laughs> right. Good. I approve. Aren't your kids in their 20s? Though I mean, you know, do you really have to sneak out of the house? No, I shouldn't. Do it. You're right. I, uh, you just get this mental thing of them, you know, growing up and stuff like that. I don't know. You're right. I should be more open about it. Parents lecture kids about sex, and so they don't want to do sex in front of the kids. Well, I'm yeah. not saying have sex in front of them. I'm right. saying leave the house yeah. and say I'm. Are you nervous? You're I don't want. Any, I don't want anybody to feel pushed. That's what I'm saying. You know? Push. Well, you know. I don't understand. Do you put a ladder outside the window? Right? No, Robin. Get out. Who are you pushing? I don't understand. If you, are you yeah, afraid? The question that I ask, you know. Are you afraid that the kids will disapprove because she is the same age as the kids? <laughs> not, not bad. Do no, you not she's, want? Um, go ahead, Barry. Do you not want the kids to Charlie. see you taking Angie out of the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's even closer. Angie, uh, would you like um, to meet his kids? Yeah, she's, I've met them. Yeah, oh, but you just sneak yeah. out. I see. Oh, you don't want them to know you're going out. But they don't even live with you, do they? Well, I mean, they're over there often enough. So. I see. Okay. All right. All right. I don't know what's going on wrong uh, with you. I, we got to have a camera over there. Yeah. There's a no telling what. Might happening. have to have a reality show with you too. <laughs> well, we got the wrap up show coming up. All right. Maybe they can get to the bottom of it. I'm having a hard time. I don't know, I don't know if I should be happy for them or call the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever Angie, it is, surprises ever, to be happy. You know, we've never. Yeah, have you ever been institutionalized? <laughs> <laughs> That's sure. You on medication of any kind? Not, not yet. Not yet. Give it we couldn't get Jim on the show this week, Robin. Go ahead. Not sure. there. Right. Well, I'm happy for the two of you. I really, really am. Thank you. I her. guess I am. Uh, <laughs> and I will prove it. She's coming. We want to see the show. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, we you, really do. Are you a citizen? <laughs> <laughs> You're not one of those yeah, mail order. She's going to be Swiss. No, she's fine. You're not a girl who's looking for citizenship. <laughs> no. I'm just asking how to ask. Right? You're not one of those gold digging whores who's after Taper's money. <laughs> <laughs> Long way to go on that one. All right. Well, anyway, listen. Thank you to all our couples. Thank it's you, a tough you. game to play. You all did well. We'll come back and uh, reconvene. Jose Canseco yeah. will come by and say hello, and uh, so much more. Right after these words. Uh, and, and of course, George got all of the positives he always gets. Mr. Everyone's in love with. Well, Brad was, he said he was traumatized by that whole event. He, was, really? he, did, he did well, I thought. He did. Yeah, when he responded to you, you know, uh, hotmovies.com. <laughs> I mean, he was really fast on that. Yes. I He's, love when George is on the show. I'm reading email now. He should be on at least once a month. The way you got him to talk about masturbating was classic. More George, please. Uh, here's another one. I love hearing George Decay on the show, and it's just more proof of Howard's genius. You're making me look good. You are good. I had never heard of George in my life before. Sorry, really? George, I'm too young for Star Trek. Still, though, I always look forward to him being on the show. He cracks me up. I don't believe in almost any of his political views, but I don't care. <laughs> I still love the old flamer. <laughs> Missed you, Artie. You look like shit on the big idea. Still, though, you were funny and interesting. Get better soon. Get better. Oh, I gotta tell you, you're out sick if you remember. Howard, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna be on the uh, Conan show tonight. Oh, you're kidding? Wonderful. Well, you know the CBS people were uh, working on, you know, promoting. Uh, 
Secret Talents of the Stars, and they, uh, uh, the Conan people uh, discovered that, you know, I'm in town uh, with uh, the Stern Show. Do you think Conan and they will... they the day. Do you think Conan will ask you about your masturbation in the shower? I, you know, I think the the staff there listens in. They, they probably they do. They probably know about. Listen, that. they see you're terrific. I mean, uh, <laughs> they, they, you you come on here we and you shine. <laughs> but what? Why was Brad traumatized? I don't understand. Well, you know, he just he just traumatizes himself. Uh -huh. he, he works himself up to this. He's very nervous. You know, a lot of pe you forget, Robin. A lot of people are very nervous being on the radio. You're used to it. But for a guy to come in who really isn't in the limelight, he's not an entertainer, mm -hmm. to come in here and to suddenly have the lights on him, and now he's he's also revealing stuff about his personal exactly life. Exactly that. It's got to be very nerve-wracking. Okay. I understand. I understand. You know, millions of people out there listening. And Did you and Brad make love last night? We did. I, you did. We did. Ooh. See, it got you all excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, who was in the bathroom good. spitting? <laughs> who spit in the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, we know exactly how it goes. George, George, fascinated. I really you know you guys know too much about us now. There's nothing private about our project. You want to know something, George? You know what's fascinating to me? What? I always thought you are so, you know, you're such a lover of life and a man who swallows life. I was shocked that, that, that when, yeah. when Bradder comes into your mouth, you go to the bathroom and spit it out. I do unto Brad as Brad does unto me. Why? Tit for tat. Why? You know, uh, I'm, Why on does he have I'm on radio, aren't I? Yes. And he's listening, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Why does it have to be tit for tat? No, I have swallowed a little bit. Ah. I just go there and go through, you know, run the wire ah. and all that. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're pretending. Why not lead by example and swallow the whole load? <laughs> Because he, uh, he doesn't believe in swallowing. But you know what? I can't believe You know what he, what he did last night? <laughs> after, after, after we did it and we were just cuddling, yes. he, he said, Who did it to who, though? Who swallowed last night? I mean, who, who spit out? Oh, Brad did the usual thing. Oh, he spit out. He did the usual thing. All right. But oh he, uh, when we were cuddling, he said, uh, you know, maybe Howard's right. It's an expression of love. Yes. Maybe I'll do it, he said. Wow. He hasn't done it yet. Wow. So he so, went out, he spit it out, and he rinsed his mouth with mouthwash. That's another positive of the show. If he, he loves may you. do it. And you would like it. You would like to see I'd like to it. know that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you, George. <laughs> well, thank you. Here's one more email about you. I practically live for the weeks when George Takei is with you on the show. He's always such a good sport about everything, and his laugh makes everything funnier. Welcome back, George. So there you go, George. Well, uh, the fans here love you. I don't know I love, about I don't know I about Conan's you. fans, but I know our fans love you. Uh, almost everyone. After the big argument between Artie and High Pitch Mike, hated High Pitch Mike. Aww. They really did. The fans love Artie. Yeah, you can't attack Artie. High Pitch Mike is a fucking asshole. <laughs> the original gay bashing comments came only after Mike called Artie's sister Stacy a whore. Artie was right to defend his sister. Women have historically been stoned or put to death after being accused of being a whore. This practice is still in effect in certain third world nations today. For Mike to throw the Matthew Shepard references out so freely and accuse Artie of perpetuating gay bashing is really hypocritical. Because if we lived in Turkey or some other country like that, Artie's sister could be in peril from Mike's comments. Fuck high pitch Mike. You know, I didn't realize that there was a maligning of Stacy Lang on the show. Well, that's true. And I remember it. So this it is tit for tat, to use uh, George's expression. High Pitch Mike should realize that he attacked Artie's that's right. sister, and that's what, you know, drew such ire. Here's another one. High Pitch Mike has got to go. He is full of hate. It's almost as if he does not get the show. Doesn't he know that everyone is goofed on over there? Where's he been? He's got that awfully grating, high-pitched voice. How can any comic in his right mind not make fun of that? He should take it in his stride or leave. Mm. Since he will likely not leave on his own, you need to fire him. His vile arguments with Artie bring the show down. I am serious about this. Besides, he's really not part of the show. He is an unnecessary and bitter appendage. Get rid of him. I love it when George is there. Today's show is terrific, except for the segment with the hateful high-pitched mic. 
So it went on and on and on. Please keep high-pitched mic as far away from the microphone as humanly possible. And this kind of stuff. So, Artie, it seems as if the fans are with you. I like that he has a voice that the guy goes, any comic in his right, man. <laughs> would have to pick one. Uh, he, this one says, Mike is a disgusting fucking hypocrite. Everything that Artie says to Mike is hilarious. Whereas Mike just comes across as an evil fucking twit. Tell Mike he's no fucking martyr and to get off his big cross. Well, there you go. So the fight continues. Uh, How did this fight get started? I mean, you know, obviously there's a history behind it. I don't re remember exactly. I, I, how. I know what happened. We were all in here. The day that he said he went to Great Adventure, remember that? He went to Great Yeah, with the, the gay yes. day, the red shirt. Right. And, and you uh, laughed at I, I, I laughed. I mean, we're all laughing, well, but I, I laughed. This? Gay day, red shirt. He, he, he claims he's not. Gay, which is fine. I yeah, mean, you know, I but, he's but told then, me that. Too. But then all these uh, things were happening that, he, like, he, he went to Great Adventure by himself. He went to the movies with a guy, and he happened to be a Great Adventure on a day that was Gay Day there for gay couples. <laughs> I see. I see. And you know, it was just we were busting the shops yeah. about that. And I mean, I I laughed that day really hard. He but, served you a meal and you ate it. Yeah, and then that great metaphor. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then after yeah, at least I, he didn't spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then after I laughed that hard, he he has a little segment that he tapes on his own, oh. and he attacked me in that segment. Well, Mike happened to end up there by coincidence at Gay Week at Disney World. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So all that's by how himself. It, all by himself. That's how it started. So I see. It, it turned out, you know, and there were many uh, tell Artie to stop with his anti-gay comments and his right. viciousness. So there are people who do agree with uh, high pitch. I remember it was a preponderance of things. Didn't right. he go to some concert alone as well? Oh yeah. He uh, went to. Madonna. Well, he went. No, he went to Sanjaya. Sanja, he was a Sanjaya fan. <laughs> yeah, and then there was a concert. <laughs> well, Artie is a wit, concert. and you know when you pr provide him with all these things, you know he, he's going to use it. Well, I like both guys. I really do. I, I do like High Pitch Mike, and I of course uh, adore Artie. So as you can see, George, it's very upsetting to see yeah. them fighting, but it does make for some good radio. I think it's on and, both sides, right? You know, it, might have, it might have even been an American Idol show that he went to by himself. That's right. Yeah, that's right, Rob. Not to say there's anything wrong with it. No. <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with it. Maybe I should, before we start the whole news block, maybe I should listen to Artie's PSA. Artie, I thought that you and George had agreed that you weren't even going to record this PSA. What well, changed? I, I don't know. First well, he all, wanted to uh, continue. He said that he's going to come up with an idea, and I said, well, uh, let's hear it. It's got to be believable. It's got to be sincere, and the public has to. I, I came up with an angle that is, uh, everything I say is truthful in it. All right, I'm going to listen. Uh, where, where, how can know, I hear these? Where are they? Uh, Scott, uh, uh, I recorded him with Scott about 10 minutes ago, and he said they should be ready for you. Um, All right, I'll get you fed. Now, by the way, you got to have a pretty stinky pussy to hit people from far oh away. Oh, my God. What I the mean, you're what talking about that? several feet away. Yeah, but know. it's believable that. Uh, maybe it wasn't pussy. Maybe it was uh, body odor. Yeah, yeah, I, or but ass. even that. Ass can travel. She's showering, isn't she? Uh, it's happened to me, yeah. <laughs> hey, Howard, yes. They're not ready yet. It's, good. it's just not ready yet. It's not. Oh. That's too bad. Why are they not ready? I don't know what Artie. I, again, I'm hearing about okay. this for the first time. All right. I, uh, I, what I did was, uh, it's a it's a very simple version of All what right. we were trying to do. I, it's it got to be a minute. So, yeah. you know, I just, uh, but everything I say in there is sincere. Okay, so. we'll, we'll listen to did it. Did you just do it? Yeah, yeah he just, uh, he just did it. Must have put a lot of thought into it. Also, no, I did, because I thought, uh, I've been thinking about it for the last few nights. I begged George to let me have one more shot, because... These HRC people now hate my guts. Right. And they can ruin your life. Sure they can. Sure, that could be a fear. Well, they, they, they want to put out a big press release right. bashing me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know. We're educating Artie. Right, George? Well, Artie can play a very influential role because right. of his history. George, that have you ever smelled bad pussy? <laughs> I have. You have? Yes. So you know what it can be. I know what it can be, and I find it not very... Pleasant. Isn't all pussy for you bad? What? No, 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 no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These oh, ones are tolerable. I, I don't think uh, I. What's, uh, what, I don't what think I ever find it. <laughs> what's erotic? Is this penis? Something else? Penis? Yeah. I don't think I've ever. Uh, I would ever uh, <laughs> call a, someone else's penis even is there tolerable. Such a, is there such well, a, that's because of your vantage point. Is there such a thing as bad penis smell? 
Oh, yes, there is. There is. Yes. Just like, you know, bad vagina smell. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're no different. Right. Oh, we're a little <laughs> Clean bit. Clean ones, dirty ones, uh, handsome ones, ugly ones. Right. Erotic ones, dead ones, you know. Right. Dead ones? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No life in them. But bad penis doesn't smell like bad pussy. Oh, it's, it can be pretty vile. Right. You ever see, like, what happened when a bad penis is in a bad pussy? Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's that's bad can. news. <laughs> Right. Well, what can I say? So now I got the HRC up my ass. Oh, no, no. I'm eager to hear what you've got to say. And, you know, because you do have that history, you can be influential. Right. I'm All right. Oh, well, well, we're going to listen to those when they're ready. Finally, Artie Lang on Adam Carolla's radio show yesterday, spending most of the interview talking about high pitch Mike and gays. The word fag apparently dumped. Artie telling Corolla in show business, Artie has to lie about the kind of guy he is, lie and say he's not grossed out by gay sex. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, Corolla agreed with me. Uh-huh. Anything else? So if you see Lang news happening, call the Artie 100 News tip line 87733 yeah. Sirius Choose Channel 100 or email us at Howard 100 News at Sirius Dash Radio. If you see Artie hooking up a gay kid to the back of a pickup <laughs> truck and dragging him along, please call. Right. You know, you <laughs> and you're going to do a PSA. Huh? I did the PSA. The PSA is ready. Oh, uh, what page? Gary page two, third column in light pink. Well, is, you, is the one marked that, uh, well, you can just play them all. Just put all four of them together. No. All right, let's see. Is this for real or a joke? No, no, no. This is completely, I, I, I thought of an angle that was believable. And everything I say is very truthful. I just hope it sounds that way. So you must submit this to the human rights campaign. All right, let's see. Hello, my name is Artie Lang, and I'm a comedian. Some of you might know me from the Howard Stern Show on Sirius Satellite Radio. Uh, my comedy is about many things. It's about religion, race, uh, sexuality, and sometimes it can go over the line and be what some people consider offensive. Recently, I, uh, in a rant on the show that reflects... Uh, completely on my own opinions and not Howard or anybody else is serious, I used uh, the word fag when referring to someone uh, who I felt was a gay person. And I understand that that uh, is probably the most offensive thing a homosexual could hear, and I'm very sorry about it. I don't mean any... Uh, where was I at? Like, um, I stopped at 50? Yeah, All right, I'm about so, a little over 50. I'm, I'm trying to think if I'm <laughs> just retarded. Uh... <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I, I guess I guess that's that's the only thing. That I'm enjoying the anguish here. <laughs> Can I see right, Mrs. Rogers, again. please? <laughs> Hello, my name is Artie Lang. I'm a comedian. Perhaps you've heard me on Sirius Satellite Radio, the Howard Stern Show. Uh, in my comedy, I talk about many things, and one of them is human sexuality. I'm a heterosexual man, and uh, recently on the Howard Stern Show, I uh, went on a bit of a rant that I'm not proud of. When referring to someone who I felt was a gay man... I use the word fag, the F word, as the gay community uh, calls it. And uh, I just wanted to say that I in no way hate or condone the hatred or violence towards gay people or any other person based on their sexuality or race. And just say you're an old, uh, you should have insulted yourself. I'm an old guinea. What do yeah, I know? Right. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> oh, wow. I believe that. Hello, my name is Artie Lang. I'm a comedian. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard me on Sirius Satellite Radio on the legendary Howard Stern show. Recently on the show, I went on a rant uh, that I'm not proud of. When arguing with someone who I felt was a gay person, in my opinion was a gay person, I referred to them as a fag or faggot, uh, two unbelievably offensive terms, 
uh, in the eyes of the gay community, and I understand why. I would just like to say that I have no hatred in my heart towards anyone based on their race, sexuality, or religion, or anything like that. I judge people individually, and uh, the last thing I would want to do would be offend someone who's gay or uh, uh, is infected with the HIV virus. Uh, am I done? So bad. <laughs> well, this is so bad. Well, well, well get the, just get. Why don't you just go on and say this? Well, you get that. Uh, the, the, the one the one. That, is this the one I'm going to use? Yeah, here's it's simpler. The here's it's the one. Here's the one. Yes, simpler. What you think is good? Well, the, yeah. uh, well, these are the takes. You're almost at the point where you're going to think, "Fuck it, I just hate fags." Well, uh, yeah. You know, it sounds. Like, doesn't no. he sound that way, George? No, George is believing. It sounds no, like no. a gun is to his head. Yeah. No, what you to say? You know what? Recently, recently in my work. I won't even leave my name out of it. This is about you. You just say hi. This is, you say hi. This is Artie Lang. And I've used the F word. It's a word that uh, is offensive to gay people. The word fag. And you know what? I'm thinking this through. And I think it offended some people. And I'm really sorry for that. Right. And I'm going to rethink my use of that word. Yeah, but you Goodbye, might good night be and God bless. honest when you say that. I don't oh. think he has oh, remorse. I oh. Yes, I do. Let me hear, you know, let me hear the final one. Guy. It's just like, um, uh, let's try it again. <laughs> this is great. All right. Loving the Mets and, well. Hello, my name is Sal Governale. <laughs> yeah. And here we go. Hello, my name is Artie Lang. I'm a comedian. Perhaps you've heard me on the legendary Howard Stern show on Sirius Satellite Radio. Right. And I want to apologize for something. Recently on the Howard Stern show, I got into an argument and lost my cool when talking to uh, someone on staff who I felt was a gay person, in my opinion, was a gay person. In <laughs> my anger, yeah. I used the word fag when referring to him and the word faggot when referring to him. And I understand that those are horribly offensive words to the gay community. And I want to apologize for those words. I didn't mean any harm. I don't have any hatred in my heart towards anybody because of their sexuality, religion, or race. I treat people individually. Uh, and um, if I in any way offended anybody out there, I'm sorry. And I will try my best never to use those words again in anger. And uh, it was only a joke. What can I tell you? Thank you. Hello, this is Artie Lang. Mm. I suspect I work with a fag. I don't believe his name is Artie Lang. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, I like the last one. Yeah, I believe me that. No one's going to hear know. it anyway. I don't you know, know, I think if you know Artie, you know yeah. that's true. That's honest. I would just go on and say, hey, this is Artie Lang from Howard Stern Show. Look, what uh, I miss though oh. is. The $100 uh, penalty for your well, I said, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so there's a sincerity there. Well, definitely. <laughs> I'm sincere about that. Uh oh. High pitch Mike is here. That's trouble. It, it's funny that he's saying he's remorseful now because he's been asked on the wrap up show. He's been asked by Howard TV. He's been asked by Steve Langford, do you regret what you said? And he says no. Well, Mike, I mean, listen, you're not the police. Right. I mean, the man is now Thank saying God. something and he is uh, offering up an apology. I think we should accept it, no? I like Mike. Think he's he's regretting that he's getting heat from groups outside. You feel it's not sincere. I don't give a fuck about you or Mike. And Mike, <laughs> how do you feel about the things that you've said about Artie? Are you sorry for that? The things I've said about Artie have been comebacks or or retorts. And they were and great. Are you sorry for that? Am I? Yes. He hasn't apologized to me he, for one thing he said. So why would I apologize to you? I'm apologizing to the gay community. <laughs> And then he goes on Adam Carolla, who I don't, you know, I don't know how big his audience is, but he exposes a whole new audience of people, you know, yeah, to all right. the bullshit he said about me. And I, you know, the day before he said he'd shut his mouth. So now he asked me about it. He asked me about it. I so I'm not going to shut my mouth. And and you know when you did that ISDN test show? Yes. Artie and Gary wanted to keep the secret from you who his girlfriend is. Yeah. She works downstairs at Del Frisco's. <laughs> She's the one with the name tag that says Cold Digger. Oh, oh. What? Wow. I don't know her. Wow. No, have to look for gold digger. Is this ever going to end? I mean, what did, what did he say? He said your new girlfriend wears a name tag 
at Del Frisco. So now, are you mad at her? It says Gold Digger. Are you mad at her? No. No, I'm, I'm just, just, just going to keep exposing you. Every time you want to bullshit with me, I'm going to keep exposing you. You know what? Could you bring your girlfriend in because I want to insult her? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get one. You wait. You know what? Are you I, I used to work with a kid like you. Uh, you mean uh, a guy who no, uh, I used to isn't work with gay? A, no. I used to work with a guy like you. He had trouble getting girls. Hasn't been easy for you. He was an asshole, too. No, he wasn't. He was a good guy. So he wasn't like Mike. He's now married. He has kids. And he was a virgin when I met him. And he got a hot wife. So I know a lot of the bitterness comes from, you know, some social awkwardness. Ugliness. No. No, no, no. You're being cruel. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Let him be Who's cruel. Let him be cruel because I'm going I'm I'm to fucking give it back I'm to him. I'm being my, cruel. I promise no. you, Howard, I will give it back to him 100%. As, as long as he wants to go, I'm going to give it back. You feel Hardy's new girlfriend is a gold digger? First of all, she's not my girlfriend. Okay, look at, look at him. First of all, Look at not... him and tell me that she really thinks he's handsome and he's a great guy. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know I'm ugly, but you need to fucking admit your ugliness, too, my friend. Well, when do I, when do I say I'm no not? No girl can be attracted to you the way you look. Wow. She's you talking your about, about you talking about my girlfriend or his yeah howard okay. i'm not talking about that <laughs> of course he's not well listen mike what what is it uh, gary i'm trying to broker a, a peaceful agreement but i got a question i think i speak for everyone else mike why are you in here right now like what seriously what is your purpose Dude, for being this, in it this psa he said shit about what me you, that i have to, mike what did you, what did you want day after day after you always day. want an apology so now Artie's giving an apology you fucking he's giving an apology you, 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 made, you said horrible things about him you got the charity to fucking throw Artie out they lost 10 grand i got the, I got yeah, the charity you, you to throw him out you, so, so fine so now Artie's going to make an apology i got the charity to throw him out how did i get the charity to throw them out. By bitching and moaning and stirring it up and everything else. By getting on the air and acting like an asshole and everything like that. Yeah, what Artie said was wrong, but you brought it up and you brought it up. Artie wanted to let you know it go. What, Gary, it's you gone. know his history. You know his history. I'm you chose to put him in the chair. I'm not interested in his history. You chose to put him in the chair. The guy's fucking apologizing. Go fucking somewhere else. He's apologizing. What can he do that's right? Who is he apologizing he, to? He's apologizing to the gay community. George asked him to do a PSA and he's fucking doing it. And you're shitting on that. What can he do that's right for you? Apologize to fucking me. He's still bashing me on fucking he doesn't radio. Like you. I hate you. He doesn't like you. I, he doesn't I have do, to apologize I hope to you. you. Die. No, he doesn't. He, right. He hopes you die having nothing to do with AIDS or gay. He just doesn't fucking like you. He said, I'll so bash your gay head in, Gary. What the fuck do you think that Is means? Is your head gay? Answer the question. Are no. you a gay guy? I've said no. I okay, said, so how am I bashing gay guys when I bash you? If you want an apology, that's one thing. But why are you coming in and shitting on this? You're if you have some sort of guilt for putting him in the charity, I have no your guilt business. at all. That's not my problem. I have no guilt at all. That's not I, my problem. You're you're like you the, put him in the charity. You're like the dweeby kid who needs constant attention. I know, and you're Mr. Perfect, I'm not, right? No, you're I'm Mr. Perfect. Perfect. No, but you, you act like you're Mr. Perfect. Well, wait a you second. act like you're above everyone. I'm not mad at my... I'm not above everyone. I want a fucking apology for what he so said. So go, go, get it from, go get it from him somewhere else. This is about the charity. This is about I the gay community. This is about me being defamed, and I have to put up with this after day. You're not famous. What are you? just did in the PSA is not about you. Mike. Oh, he didn't just say, all, I called a kid a fag. Even in the uh, apology, he's calling me a fag. God, Wake up. Wake the fuck you up. You are the quintessential example of love me, daddy. You just yeah. need attention. You're using this show. Well, with your hold it a second. I don't agree with you. I, I don't do. agree with you. No, I don't. When Artie and Mike fight, they both fight very dirty. Well, you uh, said, Mike, you said horrible things about his sister and did. all that. Of you course did. I did. And his father. And, Artie and, and, and Artie's father. Terrible things. First of all, also, but okay. that girl down at the first coach is not my girlfriend. Okay. And she's the farthest thing on earth, as far as I know, from a right. gold digger. Right. So, I mean, right. you know. So, okay. That, that, so, so that, here's what so I'm saying. Take it it's, up getting, her. it's getting very ugly. And what I'm saying is, Artie has, you know, called you gay. I mean, to me, big deal. I'm, I crazy Alice calls me gay every day. I could care less. I'm not gay, and I don't think you're gay, and I don't even care if you're gay. Doesn't matter to me. I know you're not gay. Uh, but look, here's the thing: you guys are fighting dirty with one another. You should probably call a daytime. Now, as far as this PSA goes, Artie has done something for George. Uh, I believe he's coming from a place where he feels sincere. It really isn't your job to say whether or not Artie is sincere on this. That's a d separate issue. As far as his personal relationship with you, you two are going at each other in a very low blow kind of way. You're saying terrible things and he's saying terrible things. If it's getting very uncomfortable, 
you guys should declare a detente. Did I not say that two days ago? Yes. Did I say I'd shut my mouth if he would shut his mouth? Right. I, I forget about AIDS, Mike, because I, 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 clearly you're offended by that. I hope you die in like a bad car accident where why, like, why you, you really like, feel like that way? You're in pain for ten. You really years. feel that way? Oh yeah. What are you saying? Because I don't like him. I think he's bad for the world. I I hope you become a quadriplegic. Hmm. Well, I can see where that's coming from yeah. because oh. you made fun of you uh, made fun his of father. Your dad, yes. Now, Mike, so. should he cut a PSA for quadriplegics of America? No. You're a bozo. No, that's cruel. But you've been cruel too. So you I both did. have to man up now and come to some sort of decision. Now, I'm not I, mad at you, Mike. I'm mad at the fucking kid who let you out of the locker in high school. <laughs> I'm mad at that do-gooder because oh, you, know you would have died in there of starvation. And, uh, and you know what? Clearly, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, also, 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 uh, d don't come in here and just try to get attention anymore. Gary's right. Listen, I'm going to walk in. Nobody the likes you. I allow Mike to come in here. Howard. Yes. I'm going to say one thing that I won't come in here and deal with Artie ever again if that's what. Okay. You know, everybody hates me around here. That's fine. I don't, I don't hate care. you. George, if you ever want to know what Artie really thinks about you, come listen to some audio I have. Oh. Well, wait, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Well, Mike, what is that about? Mike, what is that about? Oh, gee. You know, this is getting oh. going from bad to worse. Man. You too I, don't, I don't like know what kind of Howard, diplomat you are. You summed it up well. Right. I, that, you know, you, you, they're, they're both very hurtful to one another. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Artie, as that. a friend of mine, right. I would like a detente here. Right. I yeah. would like you yeah, to stop, stop, and I would like Mike to stop. This poor it's got to start from yeah. one side. You, you guys are Tell him to stop fucking coming into my territory. Well, who, you know, and if, he says the same thing. So somebody's got to be the big guy, and you are the big guy. Another fat joke? No. 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 Ah. Oh. I would like you to. Art, you take the initiative. Stop, stop talking about Mike, and Mike will stop talking about you. How's that? Let's do that. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> that was not a sincere. <laughs> well, who are you to say that's not sincere? <laughs> Gary the retard is mad at Artie, and he's yelling at the radio. What? Is he? Every yes. retard is. So, uh, not, uh, High Pitch Mike does have some friends. Uh oh. <laughs> Gary, if you want to say something, go ahead, speak your piece. You goddamn Mike, you motherfucker. You know what? I'm telling you fucking bullshit. I just heard you on the fucking monitor, you son of a bitch. What are you saying? You know, you're in there saying bad things. You know what? You need to do some weight. You know what's going to happen if you don't? You're going to have a stroke, you son of a bitch. Well, that's actually very smart. Now, Gary, there's some there's some uh, interesting... Uh, you are a high-pitched Mike fan, I guess. Right. And you feel Artie's out of line. Right, he is. And you're the head of the high-pitched Mike fan club. <laughs> well, all right. You, you're, you, so you got mad at Artie, and specifically, you know, I mean, look, both these guys are at fault. I mean, high-pitched Mike has said horrible things about right. Artie's sister and father. Well, I know they said on the monitor and then the other Yeah, room. and it, so that's wrong. But, again, Mike also has taken a drubbing from uh, Artie. It's very very, yes. uh, it's very painful to me. You know what? You know what? You need to quit doing drugs and quit missing so much fucking work. <laughs> All I right. mean it. I wish you could say something I could argue with. <laughs> <laughs> he's making too much sense. You know you're winning an argument for the first time? Honestly, yeah. He's like, uh, yeah. my goal is some shit I can argue with. Him. Gary's making sense. You That's know right. what? You need to get out and walk more, you son of a bitch. And Gary, what about Another the great suggestion. Gary, what about the hot chick from Del Frisco's? <laughs> is she a gold digger? I don't know. You don't know that, are you? I mean, I'm not sure about that. girl has a lawsuit, I think. Well, I don't even know who is. We didn't name her. We didn't name her. Who is he talking about? I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know, know where Del Frisco's is. is. I couldn't <laughs> point her out in a lineup. Oh, I, don't believe oh, any, I don't believe any chick from Del Frisco's <laughs> is banging you, so don't worry. Right. I think that, that, okay. that, that's true. That's right. Yeah, uh, George that. Takei is here, of course. He is back from his triumphant appearance on the Conan O'Brien show. I saw yes, some of it this morning. Oh, yeah, it was, it was great. fun. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Um, I should play you some of it. I'll, I'll do a couple of phone calls and I'll play the Conan O'Brien right. interview. I hope he was the first guest. Did they have the? Wait. No, I was the second guest. Oh. Who was first? Uh, John Leguizamo. You're kidding. You're not yeah. bigger than him. Oh my God. Well, I don't know. Uh, wait, I'm sure Conan me. doesn't think so. Are you serious? I, I, that's the way it happened. That's Does John have a pressing engagement? Hey, just your presence. Even if you weren't doing Heroes and this new celebrity uh, uh, talent show, you'd be bigger than him just from Star, Star Trek. Trek. Well, you know, actually, we're, I'm leaving right after uh, this show uh, back for L.A. because uh, I got cast at the last minute on the um, Adam Sandler comedy, Don't Mess with the Zohan. Is that yeah, you're film? going to work with it's Adam Sandler. Yeah. Oh. I'm oh, no kidding. You'll be tonight. great in one of those Adam Sandler films. Is it, what do you play? 
Uh, you know, they sent me a script, and uh, you can't aside, figure it out. <laughs> I can't figure. They didn't send me the whole script. They just sent the side, so uh, I can't. I really. You mean he keeps? I, is he like Woody Allen, and he keeps wow. everything top secret, even from the actors? All I got was I a doubt side. It. I, no, one page. It's only one page. One page. Oh, and I. They said there are other pages, but uh, they didn't. Oh, they're all. Oh, I see. They just sent They're the still page. writing it. It's a masterpiece. Yeah, you know what? A lot of those guys. You, you, I mean, you've seen Adam Sandler movies. Does yeah. it look like they finished the script on no, time? Not even. <laughs> Out. But yeah, he they just cast gets me three idea. days ago. Well, I was here. I yeah. found out about it while I was here. I, I got to tell you though, his movies make a lot of money. Oh, so they do. Yeah, so it's high profile. You're Buku residuals. By a lot of people. Yeah, Buku residuals is but right. But there's one big disappointment. <laughs> yeah. What? We had tickets. We were planning on staying over another night, and we had tickets for Patrick Stewart's uh, Macbeth. And right. so Brad's staying over. Right. And I have to go back. And guess who's he's taking as his date? Artie. No, he's taking <laughs> Pam Sabian. Tim, oh, uh, Tim, Tim Sabian's, Sabian's wife. wife. Good. You're going to say Jared. <laughs> ah. Hey, no, that Pam, I think Pam is still pissed that Tim moved here from Philadelphia and, uh, <laughs> you know, moved them into Manhattan. She needs I some she Manhattan. Loves it. No. No? Pam? Oh, she I talked to her. She, she said she likes it. I don't believe that for a oh, minute. Really? She's a good bullshitter, Robin. Oh. Right. She's just putting, she, because she's the, on the best program face? director's wife, she has to put on a good uh, face. But uh, I, re I remember. the truth, huh? She, well, she had a bunch of friends in sure. uh, Philly. She had a great job in Philly. And Tim took the job here. He's always wanted to work in New York. But uh, I think that she's uh, mucho kvetching about the... Uh, but she's a great guy. Well, she, this will be a, a nice lovely night lovely out Lovely lady. For her. Yes. And she's always pleasant around the world when I've seen her, but you never know. You know what? Introduce her to some guys. Maybe uh, <laughs> Maybe that'll make New York seem a little brighter. You know what? Yeah. Well, she's met Brad. <laughs> Me and George might be on this. What time's your flight? Uh, two thirty. Uh, all right. Are you not on the same flight? That's been great if we were on the same flight. Uh, oh, no, mine's at one. Mine's at one thirty. So one thirty. You're be great if we just sat together earlier. all day. <laughs> you could be sitting all morning yeah. long. You and sit here, <laughs> and then you sit there. Yeah, but I'd be concerned about being on the same airplane yeah. with Artie. Why? <laughs> What's the uh, problem? Well, uh, are you afraid the plane would be overweight? I mean, is that a fat joke? Uh, you know, I'm going to yeah. be pulling up at my uh, armrest. Uh, Oh, well, you, you know you're getting awfully comfortable. You're uh, attacking Artie. <laughs> yeah, he's saying he's gonna, he's not gonna have much room in his seat if Artie sits next to him. What well, about the, I think he's afraid of the plane going. I guess the human rights organization doesn't give a shit about fat people. <laughs> well, well, they no, no, no. We, we, I think you should be equal too, <laughs> in appropriate proportions. <laughs> All right, here's the plot of the, the new jokes Adam, are hurt. Here's the plot of the new Adam Sandler movie, uh, an Israeli commando fakes his death to pursue his dream of becoming a hairstylist in New York. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what it says on the website. Oh, that sounds horrible. And the title is Don't Mess with the Zohan. You is he playing Zohan? Yes, I don't know. Yes, I think I've seen bits of this. You have? Uh, well, I, believe, believe so me. So what am I playing? Uh, 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 Are you going to be one of the hairdressers? <laughs> I don't know. No. I don't think so, judging from that line. Really? Those lines on that one page. Are you a customer? I well, I say something about uh, well, hello, stranger, uh, and then he says something, and I say, uh, uh, well, I hope you like Ugly Betty, and that's it. Well, you want to know something though? The movie stands a chance of being real funny because it's written by Sandler, uh, Bob Smigel, who does um, the uh, uh, Insult Dog, trying yeah. the Insult Dog, who's a real good writer, and Judd Apatow. Who's got all those hit yeah. right Oh, the movies. super bad movies. Yeah, and all super that. bad, yeah. knock up, all those. So it might be a real good it one. It could be very funny. Yeah. yeah. So good for you. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe I don't an know Adam what I'm Sandler to, movie but... will be fun. All right, I'll get to George's appearance on Conan in a minute. I'll play you some of that all so right. we can hear that. In case you missed it, it's on awfully late. Hey now, everybody. How's it going? Hey. I just wanted to say, George, uh, thank you very much. You're one of a kind. I just appreciate it on behalf of all the fans. You oh, thank you for the compliment. Speech. Awesome. You did great last night on Letterman, I mean, on the Conan O'Brien show. That was really Yeah, I'll, I'll play a little bit of that. That's cool, man. The only thing I take umbrage with is that George was second guest yeah, on Conan O'Brien. I believe he's the biggest star. He's not only the announcer on this show, which would make him a big star you know right what? away. If yes, we it took does. photographs out to the street yes. and showed them 
John Leguizamo or, or George, George Takei. Who do you think people would be able to identify more? Probably neither one. But, oh, okay. <laughs> no, but George Takei, of course. I of mean, course. Come on, he's a way bigger star. And, and you really should not have agreed to be second. Well, I, I knew nothing about that. All right, well, that's got to be looked into. I, I'm going to take that part over. I'm going to make sure that when George is booked on things. He's booked first. You stick with I me, appreciate George. appreciate all your good I'll help. have you off every show. <laughs> <laughs> your career will go nowhere. It will skyrocket. <laughs> all right, here's George. Let's see. I'll play some of this. Here's George talking about... Uh, well, you want to hear how he met met us? They they do bring us up. Oh, yes. really? Okay. okay. Here we go. I'm playing it out of order. Maybe I should just play it all. But yeah, I'd like to you hear are, it all. Of course. You want to hear the, hear it all? I I yeah. I guess unless it's extra boring. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't hear the whole thing. I, this part I did hear. I'll play this part first. Okay. Something tells me to play this part first. You are, of course, uh, just a terrific gig announcer on the Howard Stern Show. Ah, yes. Uh, how did you get? How did you get involved with Howard Stern? I don't understand how this even happened. Well, uh, in the early '90s, about '90 or '91, right. I was doing a play here. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing a play, you know your publicist gives you uh, your assignment to promote the play. Right. And I didn't know Howard from Adam. Uh, I was given this address on Madison Avenue. Went there. And uh, they asked me to wait in the, the, the um, green room. I was seated there uh, flipping through some magazines. Mm -hmm. And they had this radio program on. It was the coarsest, most disgusting conversation. You know, right. I, I, I said to the guy next to me, why can't they get uh, some nice music on? I mean, this is really offensive. You know? Right, right. He said, that's the show we're waiting to go on. <laughs> You had no idea who Howard Stern was? I, I had yeah. no idea. Wow. I was taken aback. Yeah. And then they came to usher me uh, to the uh, studio, met this tall, skinny, wild-haired guy. Yeah, yeah. And I said, good morning, how are you? And he said, oh, you have a deep voice. Anyone with a voice that deep has got to have a big dog. <laughs> I said, are we on the air? Yeah. And yeah. that was my introduction to Howard Stern. It's not really the... Yeah. It, <laughs> it's not exactly the Charlie Rose show. Uh, <laughs> that is the way it happened, right, yeah, Howard? I guess so. I'll take your word for it. Oh, I, It was a memorable meeting. Yes. Well, it's worked out rather well, don't you think? It certainly has. Yeah, we're an odd couple, but yet we've, re, we've united. The Let's see what else the you talked about. has grown over the years. You talked about uh, William Shatner a little bit. I don't think oh, I yes. heard that. Let me hear that. You have been very public about your, I don't want to say the word disdain, but uh, your hate. For <laughs> <laughs> you and William Shatner, you, you didn't like William Shatner all those years that you were making Star Trek. You, you, you thought he was a little overbearing. It got on your nerves. You used to talk about it a little bit. Last year, you got to roast him. It was a William Shatner roast. You got to get up and roast him, and you really went after him. That must have been cathartic for you, right? Oh, I, we know we have a 40-plus year history. Yeah. And, you know, all the others are good friends. I right. Mean, we are you like family. the rest of these Star Trek They're gang. They're wonderful people. Yeah. But Bill has always been, a, for example, you know, I mean, 40 years together, and he still couldn't pronounce my name, my surname, properly. George, you're George Takei. Yeah, but he kept pronouncing it Takai. Right. And I kept correcting him. I couldn't get it into his noggins. Right. So I thought I'd give him a, a way to rhyme that would stick with his head. E easy for him to remember, yeah. I told him, Bill, it's Takei, just like your toupee. Why is the toupee? Right, right, right. <laughs> Into his noggin, so I got it on his noggin. You got, uh... <laughs> Real good. He delivered that well. Yeah. Could have yeah. done better. I'm still critical. You also got very racy in your celebrity roast. <laughs> racy? Yeah, yeah, you know it. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing uh, about... Um, Bill, he has a special acting style. You know, right. It's very staccato, gasping, you know. Right, right. Uh, uh, oh, you got to, got to. Exactly. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> and I thought it sucked. And so, <laughs> I, <laughs> I told him if I could get my partner to suck that hard, I'd never leave. 
question. What? Way who, to who wrote go. this for you? They didn't bleep that. That's great. Yeah, I, I asked. You know, can, can I say that on the you know on the Conan show? This show has rubbed off on you. Look it certainly you. has. Wow. You have been broadening and. Uh, you're liberating. Specifying uh, influence. Do you think five years ago you would have talked like that? On I don't talk think so. Absolutely no. not. No. You are out of out of control. Well, you know, you, you've been my example. You know? <laughs> it's been liberating. <laughs> well, you're a good talk show, I guess. That's act, that was actually a joke from the roast, though, right? It was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was. leading him into the I roast. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Look at the applause. They love it. <laughs> You know what it is, George? I years don't ago, think John Leguizamo got these kind of laughs. No. You know what it is, George? Yes. <laughs> You're right. He didn't. The, the thing of it is, your honesty, talking about Shatner's toupee, talking about you thought his acting style sucked, uh, you know, coming out and uh, talking about dong. <laughs> See, this, well, that was your word. Th yes, <laughs> but this is still refreshing. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a new you, I feel. I really do. Well, you know, I I grew up closeted and compartmentalized. Yes. And so, you know, that sort of uh, uh, shapes the rest of your life. Right. And then um, once I met you, literally, it is you, you know, mm -hmm. and I started listening to you and seeing how free you were. And then I saw how uh, free you were with the... Uh, important issues of our times, you know, political, right. social. So you're letting it out, too. You're, exactly. you're emulating this. Yes, I like that. <laughs> now, so you're my role model, Brilliant. Howard Stern. Back on Conan now. Oh, yeah, yeah. At this hour. Suddenly, brand doesn't sound so cool, does it? <laughs> what was the brand reference? I, I guess that happened earlier, huh? I don't know what he said. I should actually. Got it out of context. Did, um... Did, what did William Shatner say to you after the celebrity roast? Oh, that. Well, did you he know, say anything to you? Well, I went up to him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, gave him a big hug. Right. And he whispered into my ears, you really meant that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say? I just said, good yeah. luck, Bill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Live long and talk. Yeah. Oh. oh, what do you think, Artie? You're a talk show veteran. I mean, that was good stuff, right? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, you recognize that uh, suck, uh, his acting suck bit. Yeah, because uh, we were at the roast together. Right. And as more? great as he was on Conan, he probably killed harder than anybody at the roast, really? too. I mean, yeah, he just delivers a joke perfect. Well, well, do you want to hear more? Sure. All right, everybody, we're back. My next guest played Sulu on Star Trek. And beginning next Tuesday, you can see him on the new CBS show, Secret Talents of the Stars. We're thrilled he's here. Please welcome George Takei. I like that version of the song. Isn't it? Oh, here, right. George. Uh, Live and, long and prosper. Uh, that was. <laughs> wait a minute, that was Spock. <laughs> well, I mean, a good uh, greeting. We all yes, yes. Know, incorporate. Everyone should lives. live long and prosper. Exactly. Be he Vulcan or. Well, Vulcans are long lived, about 200 years. Yes, they live to 200 but years. But I was told by a doctor that our machines, our human bodies, mm -hmm. are programmed to be operative for about 135 years. And it's. What we do to it or not do for it, that the machine breaks down before that full operative life. Hear that, Arnie? Do you think if I just drink a lot of, like, uh, you know, distilled water and eat vegetables, I'll live to 135? No, no. Moderation in everything. Eat healthy, lots of fiber, uh, you know, take, uh, <laughs> lots of sleep. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Who just fiber? wooed fiber? <laughs> what the hell is that? I love about the younger generation. Fiber! Whoa! Really? If he mentions fiber tonight, I'm gonna woo. <laughs> That's pretty good. And then you uh, went on to talk about something that I think we've spoken about on this show, but it's still so interesting that you started his first job in, you know, as a Screen oh, yeah. Actor Guild member was voicing those old Godzilla movies. Oh, yes. Because they were all done in Japanese. When they came over to this country, they needed somebody to play the male role. And uh, George, of course, played one of the male roles of the Japanese guys in the I did Godzilla. about uh, eight or nine voices. Yeah, it's amazing. And then, uh, you know, you talk about you have to match the lips, the lip syncing. Well, that never worked. 
And yeah, and, 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 <laughs> well, you're and George get an said, example of that. George said it's tough because Japanese, you know, is so different from anything English. Yeah. And then, uh, the, what was the word in Japanese? That Bakayero, you which means stupid fool or you, you foolish thing. You. But the lips didn't move the right way to say stupid fool. Right. So what was the word they put in? Banana oil. Banana oil. <laughs> and then now, how Conan, does that work with? Uh, hmm. Conan well, found the clip from the actual yeah, Godzilla movie, wow. and in fact, instead of saying stupid fool, George says banana oil. It's crazy. And it, like, it fits the lip movement. Yeah, but it doesn't yeah. fit the script. So here it is. It's Listen, the, this is the actual context. movie. This is the actual you gotta movie. you got to see the scene, too. Now, I have to ask you about this. Because oh, wait, wait. Here, I'll see if I can find the clip. Maybe I don't even have it. I don't have it. Oh. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and it's pretty visual, too, because you got to watch a little bit. Yeah, you, right. you need to see it. But anyway, it was a good appearance on Conan O'Brien's yeah, show for George. Home run. Home run. Thank you. It was good fun. Big week for you.